It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Thursday, July the 25th. Good morning. Everybody okay? We good? Yeah, rocking and rolling, man. I'm a scientist at heart. Experimental day for me today. How so? For the first time since I arrived in Minnesota about 18 months ago, yeah. I arrived at the studio having completed a full breakfast. Oh. <laughs> I woke up early, and yeah. I just said, you know what? Let's see what happens. And I made myself a full-on, I made an egg yeah. burrito, a little sausage, had some uh, nice. had some fruit on this. I mean, I literally made myself a full meal Ooh, like yeah. two down hours ago. Yeah. With silverware yeah, it was, and everything. It was, it was great. A napkin. Mean, yeah, now I'm ready to go to sleep. That means out there in <laughs> listener land, if you hear us playing, say, two songs in a row, that means Steve's taking a dump. Yeah. It's, I tell you what, man. This is going to be, I mean, this is my idea. Back When I was younger, I once did a yeah. show. When I first started doing sports talk, I did a show where I was drinking just to see what would happen. This is kind of like that, but an older guy version. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, well. I'm, not, not, I'm not boozing it up. I just had a meal ahead of time. Let's see what happens. I mean, you are... Let's throw caution to the wind. Damn the torpedoes. Let's do it. <laughs> I hope you didn't get a tummy ache. Here's your top five and six. Here are the top things you need to know to get your day off right. One of them is not the fact that I am on a full stomach. Number five. Man... It's so nice here. I Like I said, I got here 18 months ago, and everybody just welcomed me with open arms. And why would that be surprising? As a new survey says, Minnesota is the friendliest state in America to visit. Yeah. Wait, it doesn't say to move, to relocate. Yeah. It just says to simply visit. As long as you stay out of Minneapolis. I guess I've overstayed my welcome. I've, yeah. I've met nothing but friendly people in Minnesota. Really? No You'll kidding. you never fit in. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're friendly to my face. Exactly. That's I'm, Minnesota nice right there. Yeah, well-versed in Minnesota nice. Uh, there's another, there's a thing called Southern Hospitality. By the way, it's the exact same thing. Hey, good to see you. When the hell are you leaving? <laughs> I mean, that's just how that goes. But apparently, the nicest states in America, Minnesota, Tennessee, South Carolina, Texas, Wyoming, India. Blah, 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 blah. I, I don't, I, I'm a Southerner. I don't buy the Southern thing. I guess, I guess, no. I guess nice is, is a surface level. People look up and go, hey. Yeah. That, that's as far as it goes. Yeah. Because pretty much everywhere you go, people say hey, and then they do look away and go, what's that guy doing here? <laughs> I don't like the cut of his jib. All right. Well, in Minnesota, that's an old saying. Come for the kindness, stay because your car won't start. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like that. That's a t-shirt. Add that to the list. Number four on the top five at six. Damn it. Makai Blackman has torn his ACL. He will be yeah. out for the uh-huh. season. Hmm. Second Another DB. Second year defensive back, who by the end of last year was looking like a pretty darn good football player. Um, 15 games, started three times, 41 tackles, had a pick, a fumble recovery, three tackles for loss, and was a guy that the Vikings looked at and said, oh yeah, he's coming along. He's going to be a part of the defense for years to come. First day of practice, ACL tear out for the season. That yeah. sucks. That's Minnesota Vikings football. I know. No, Man, that's, that's a drag. Two DBs before the season even gets started. Uh, um, Jackson's tragic death. Yep, Ooh. yep. Lost one, and then uh, lost one forever. The, the tra- like you said, the, the car yeah. accident, and then now this. Uh, but you know what? I mean, it is a, it is a league that's built on next man up. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Number three on your top five at six. The Summer Olympics start tomorrow in Paris. What about the next bunch of Olympics? They've announced um, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34. Okay. 2034 Winter Olympics, I'm sorry, Summer Olympics have been announced for Salt Lake City. Uh, winter That's Olympics. That's winter. Yeah. Winter. What did I say? Why did I say summer? I this, I'm sorry. They had the Winter Olympics in 2002. They're having them again yes. in 2034. The 2032, sorry, Summer Olympics will be in Brisbane, Australia. Yeah. Brisbane. Um, Most Winter Olympians hang out in Salt Lake City, I found out. They just live there. If they, uh, When they did the Winter Olympics this last time, they have watching parties. That was a big thing NBC did. You mm-hmm. watch the family's reaction to, oh, right. sure. you know, the and they're all in Salt Lake City. But yeah. that's where everybody trains. That's where everyone hangs out. That's certainly makes it easy for the American team. Yeah, yeah, um, not far to go. Uh, the the next Winter Olympics are in Italy. The next Summer Olympics after the this summer will be in Los Angeles. If the twenty thirty four Winter Olympics happen, I'll be surprised. I, I just I just think it's a dying breed. I just don't. Th- I mean, brand. Yeah. I don't think. 
Put it this way. My kids are 24 and 22. Yeah. They could not care less about the Olympics. Right. And we watched it with them as kids. Well, but it's a different thing than it was for us And as we kids. watched tennis, too, you know, yeah. and golf and all that crap because there, you know, wasn't 24 hours of the yep. exact sport we wanted to watch uh, all the time. So, yeah, I don't know. They haven't made money on these things. In fact, the last Olympics they made money on was the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City. Hmm. That was the last profitable Olympics. So, yeah, I don't know if they'll keep this propped up or not. If they made money on the Olympics, if Salt Lake City came out in the clear, that was way better than the 96 Olympics in Atlanta. I lived there then. Yeah. And the build-up, the seven-year build-up, and then the experience itself, it left that entire city going, what the hell did we do that for? <laughs> uh, but anyway, best of luck. Let's see if, uh, if we're still talking about this in 2034. Number two on your top five at six, Wisconsin finally has dropped a ban on carrying a gun while fishing. That no one listened to anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, when's the last time someone got a, a ticket or arrested for having yeah. a gun while fishing? Well, I, we, we were out fishing. We didn't have a gun. And just no. think how handy that would have come in. <laughs> Trying to get those big whoppers in the boat. <laughs> Steve, blast I, this fish for me, please. I, I'm the first guy to say, I don't I do not do, uh, I, I fish every, well, well based, we, you and I had a great time a couple months ago, but that puts my average to every 11 years I go fishing <laughs> uh, for life. I think that was my fifth time. I just um, don't see what could possibly go wrong uh, with a lot of booze out on the drinking water on the all day yeah, and a handgun. Uh, but apparently in Wisconsin, if you want to go fishing and you want to carry a firearm, as you've been doing for years, now you no longer have to even pretend there's going to be a problem. All right. They've overturned that rule. Have fun. Yeah. Uh, number one on your top five at six. And oh my God, look out. Minnesota flying cars statute goes into effect August 1st, baby. The so-called Jetsons law. Yeah. Before we go any further, Tony Lee, could we please get a Jetsons sound effect from you? Oh, I'd be delighted. That'd be great. <clears throat> Just warm it up. Get it ready. All right. Observe. There it is. Oh, there it That's is. the sound of the Twin Cities sooner than later. Right there, baby. Some of our egghead politicians <laughs> oh my getting God. out in front of the... Yeah, good law. Good job, okay. you guys. Um, airplane to car hybrids designed for road use that are capable of taking off and landing in an airfield, now legal as of August 1st. Yep. I'll believe it when I see it, although I do I do hope to, I, I hope people have their iPhones ready for the videos of these people crashing these flying cars left, <laughs> right, and center. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be. But uh, the, again, the flying cars will not be able to take off directly from roads. They're going to have to be able to. You have to go to like an airstrip, like a regular plane. But I guess once you land it, then you can drive yourself home in the thing you just flew yourself back to your hometown Ooh. in. Um, again, uh, I mean, I guess it's good to be ahead of the curve. Is it? Uh, I don't know. We'll Why find are we out planning soon for this and we still can't go by week? Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. We're, we're uh, in the, should the technology ever arise and we start using flying cars out there, you know, from our briefcases like the Jetsons? Uh, yeah, figure out the damn weed yes. thing here before we start trying to tackle flying cars. Man, um, eggheads. Yeah, well, you know, uh, there's there is there is some connection somewhere. Something about. A there's something to be said for a, a car that can fly and weed that you can purchase at a store <laughs> and the the connected the, uh, the connective tissues there I haven't put it quite together yeah, yet. I don't know. Uh, there's there's something about the two. Something I guess along the lines of I would fly my car but I'm too stoned. I mean there's going to be something <laughs> something about those two storylines. Uh, there, there's a Venn diagram flying. I've yet to create yeah. between those two things. The Summer Olympics, as I just mentioned, do they do kick off tomorrow in Paris? A few events have already started. Soccer games have already been played yep. a few things but the opening ceremonies a big show uh, tomorrow from Paris it's very exciting you got gymnastics you got swimming you got basketball you got uh, judo you've got condoms oh my god do we have condoms hang tight connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text line 651-989-ROCK that's 651-989-ROCK 92 KQRS I live with my wife. I have a 12 year old uh, son at home, so we do the important stuff still. Like, you know, we still have sex, but there's always someone in the house now. <laughs> and, uh, so for 12 years, the only noise we've made is. That's like, that's like the most fun we've had in 12 years. We go. <laughs> Even one of you pipes up. He, oh, trap! He's listening at the door. He's going, they're having a battle. 
<laughs> Sounds even so far. Oh, dad won. <laughs> Chris Maddock right there. This is the KQ Morning Show. Chris Maddock will be at the Laugh Camp Comedy Club in St. Paul tomorrow and Saturday at 8 p.m. both nights. He'll be here in studio with us today at 925. He's a very funny gentleman, the uh, uh, Stillwater guy. Been doing this for a long time. Yeah. And I, that reminds me of a conversation uh, a few years ago. My son, what, early in the pandemic, when we're all still getting used to the fact that we can't leave the house, Spending a lot of time together, a lot of Uno, a lot of Scrabble, a lot of everything going on. And out of the blue one day, my son started telling uh, Rosemary and I about the time that he heard us in bed having sex when he was a little kid. Yeah. And he told us this whole long story about it, and we were just blown away. And then Danny goes, I'm just making every bit of this up. I never <laughs> heard of that. But he had us completely, I mean, just, we were completely like, and we and what now? And you yeah. and you did what? And you yeah. were outside, and you, and he talked, he literally was about to say he came in the room, and we didn't even notice, and he was trying to tell us he had climbed under the bed. Yeah. And we were just like horrified. And then he goes, I'm kidding. I know. Just, just. <laughs> anyway, that was a good time. I, my mom and dad clever. used to just tell us they were fighting. Sometimes they go, your Is mom and I are going to go fight in the other room. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I, I was listening to Chris there. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's, that was, we just thought mom and dad were fighting. It sounded like they were fighting. I did walk into my grandma. Uh, giving some dude a mouth party one time when I was No, a you did not. Yeah, in fact, there was. Uh, I told this story years ago. One of our KQ <laughs> listeners actually got the got the hotmail handle. It was like uh, Zepsaw's grandma giving a guy a BJ at yes. hotmail dot com. <laughs> Your grandma. Yeah, I didn't know what was going on. My oh, grandmother was uh, single at the time, and uh, you know, divorced, and we we're living in a trailer with her uh, when I was a small kid in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, and uh, she had a friend, much like Alice, you know. Did on the Brady Bunch, and he was uh, like the Sam little the oh Sam the Sam butcher, butcher. Right. Sam. yeah, yeah. And he would just uh, her old friend would drop by every once in a while, and she had a sliding door there in the trailer, and it was open. It was I can't, a, I can't, re- yeah. I can't resist. Sam occasionally would bring the sausage. Is he what you're saying? Brought the sausage, <laughs> yeah. and her grandmother enjoyed. Um, I wow. th- I saw Grandma kissing Sam the Butcher. That's a that's not no. <laughs> hang on, yeah. I'm feeling holiday festive all of a sudden yeah. for some reason. I didn't get okay. it until years later, and I went, "Wait a minute, oh, yeah. hang it. on a second. You just thought it you'd happened. been bitten by a snake. <laughs> she was working the venom out. I wasn't sure what was going yeah. on, but I knew I shouldn't be looking. <laughs> well, I can tell you. And how old were you, probably? Oh, well, we moved out to South Dakota when I was five, so it was probably four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. explains yeah. a lot. Ex- doesn't yeah. it, guys? That yeah. explains a lot. We're getting some insight here. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Well, was Grandma much of an athlete? Uh, not that I'm aware of. No. More of a musician. Okay. Oh, a really? P- pianist. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Ladies and gentlemen, but no, she did uh, like the little rag time there, tickle the ivories. There All are right. 14,500 athletes at the Olympic <laughs> Village in Paris this week uh, as the Summer Olympics kick off. Uh, so 14,500 athletes, and the uh, director of health services said they have made available about 250 thousand condoms for the 14,500 athletes. Uh, rubber, a raincoat, a party hat, love sock, squirt skirt. Ew. See? 200,000 male condoms, 20,000 female condoms, 10,000 oral dams will be available. It's about, it averages about 20 per person. Yeah, those uh, horny buggers are just getting after it. Um, these condoms are Olympic branded. They come in bright and colorful packaging. <laughs> they feature the official mascots of the both the Olympics and the Paralympics, and they also have little messages on each packet, kind of like fortune cookies. Oh, that's sweet. You know, they, kind of like uh, the Taco Bell hot sauce packets. Yeah, you rip it open, and then you, pull, you see it, and it says, on the field of love, play fair. Ask for consent. Okay, that's a nice message, I guess. Yeah. How about this? Don't share more than victory. Protect yourself against STDs. Uh-huh. I, I, mean, it's, okay. I mean, if you make it uh, too clever, or you make the packaging too nice, people are just w- going to want to keep them as souvenirs. Well, They're I, not going to want to use them. They're going to be raw dogging at the Olympics. Some of those, well, <laughs> there's a good chance of that. No need, to be, <laughs> no need to be a gold medalist to wear it. That's another one. <laughs> Isn't that going to be, uh, maybe that's a, a competition there. I don't know. Think about that. We got to relieve the pressure on some of these athletes. Let's remind them, you don't have to win gold to go for the gold, <laughs> if you will. I mean, it, it makes 
sense. You put them all in Olympic Village, all from around the world, mm -hmm. and uh, they're in peak shape. They've been training their asses off. Yeah, I mean, these are these are teen and and most mostly people in their late teens and twenties. Yeah, that's man. the average. I'm sure the average Olympian is. 25 at the oldest right? right yeah exactly and and they're like you said peak peak time of their athletic performance yeah. they're you know they are at their their best and they've spent the last if not four years three years just preparing for a few minutes of their life like yeah. they have put everything into this right um and uh and and along the way probably not uh, a, a, as much sex as other friends from high school their age yeah. You know what I mean? They're, right. the, they're like, no, sorry, I got to get back in the uh, yeah. in that, high, that 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 low altitude tank and, <laughs> and recover my muscles or whatever the hell they do yeah. to keep themselves in shape. And they're going to go compete. They're going to I mean, think about this. There there are athletes who have spent years and years and years getting ready for something that will last yeah. less than a minute. Right. And then at the end of it, when it's over, win, lose, or, or win, place, or show, or you know, come in seventh, or whatever. If you come in ninth at your yeah. event. That means you're the ninth best in the world at something. You're still awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like, like, yeah, I'd love to be on the medal stand. I'd love to hear my national anthem. But holy crap, there's 7 billion people on the planet, and I'm better than Top all but ten. eight of them. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go get my freak on now. That makes perfect so, sense to me. And imagine walking into a club, going into a bar somewhere where everybody's just smoking hot. Yeah. In the Olympic Village, mm -hmm. I guess everyone is ripped and cut and in perfect shape and just that's, must and that, be like by the gods way, that's, and goddesses. That's why the shot put and hammer throw, they, those guys <laughs> kill because they're so unique. <laughs> you, know, the, you know, the weightlifters, the, the, the power lifters. The, yeah, those, those guys that are like the strongest man on earth, but he's yeah. got that giant tank on him it's like oh look, get a look at him that's, that's right. different right. but you know in the olympic village i mean it's at a certain point does anyone i mean you i i am at because they're basically dormitories it looks like a, the, the olympic villages inside looks like a college dorm yeah and in fact in atlanta those the olympic village from 96 is now college dormitories they built them to then be converted immediately i just imagine nobody being clothed walking around the hallways. <laughs> Everyone is on display. Right. If you had a bod like that, wouldn't you just be nude all the time? Yeah, yeah. Like of course. Freaking Roman painting, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be? Yeah. Like Dionysus. Give me, give me, give or was that a, Greek, I guess? Give me a rubber band and some peanut shells, and that's all I need. And so, let me just wrap myself up. <laughs> There's a conflict here, though. So they're just uh, dishing big uh, bowls, candy dishes of condoms everywhere. Yeah. But remember, they're going with the sexless beds. You know, they came up with those like they did during the, the Tokyo. anti-sex beds. Yeah. All right, sex, yeah, right. Anti-sex beds. Potato, tomato. But and, yeah, but you're right. It's the anti-sex beds where uh, they're brittle, uh, basically matchstick beds where if they get a little too rompy, uh, these things just don't hold up. But you know they're going to be having a lot of but sex, it, so I but, don't understand why you do that. But apparently that's false advertising. The Olympic yeah. Committee said they were doing that, but... Athletes, uh, several athletes have posted videos in the Olympic Village where they're just where they're proving that not to be the case. Reese McClenahan is an Irish gymnast. That's right. two words I've never said in the same sentence. <laughs> Irish gymnast. Um, you, I, I just imagine if he's running down and going to do a vault, or if he's on the pommel horse, you know, he's just like pink moons, yellow clovers. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's just, it's, I just, it's like a little elfin, little limerick guy going on. Uh, a little rainbow, a, sparkly rainbow. Rainbow. Come I do. I call this move the little leaping leprechaun. <laughs> uh, Reese McClenahan posted a video. Listen to this. This is him in his room on his bed. I'm at the Paris Olympic Games and I once again have these cardboard anti sex beds. When I tested them last time, they withstood my testing. Maybe I wasn't rigorous enough, though. No. Nope. All right. Jumping up and down on it. Jeez. No, nope, they passed the test. It's fake. Fake news. Uh, all it's, right. Well, it's he's fake, fake news. He's an Irish gymnast. He probably weighs like what eighty five pounds. But yeah, he so he gets up on the bed and he's doing the old kid romp up there. You know, yeah. just jumping up and down on the bed as hard as he can, and and he doesn't break it. Well, it is it, like to your I was going to say two gymnasts hook up. <laughs> the, does the bed even know? I mean, no. like you got a combined body weight of one hundred and forty eight pounds for right, two of them. Right. I, I, listen, I've slept with countless gymnasts in my life. And the, <laughs> no, wait, no, I'm sorry, I've never slept with a gymnast ever. Hoops and uh, ropes everywhere. That's exactly nasty. Uh, I tell you what, man. When the you get you get the uh, what's the gymnastics where they have the ribbons and the ball? What's that called? That's silly, uh, right? Yeah. But it's yeah, whatever it is. What, what, what's that? I, I don't that's, know. That's, that's the I one. think it's. Rhythm gymnastics. Prancing. Rhythm, rhythm ah, gymnastics. Yeah, that, well, it, it's a whole new uh, version of the rhythm method, I can assure you of that. <laughs> Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line. 
651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show for July the 25th. How about a history lesson? Let's look back. On this day in 1990, long before there was going viral, somebody went viral, and her name was Roseanne Barr, and she went to a (laughs) Padres game. And, oh, my goodness. I'm only going to give you a couple seconds of what happened next. She displayed Uh, her interpretation of our national anthem. And then she grabbed her crotch, crotch, and then she spat on the floor, on the ground, if you will. Classic. And she said, oh, I was doing that because I was making fun of baseball. It was it was literally, I mean, there are some bad national anthems. I mean, we saw one at the All-Star Game last week. Yeah. That poor girl, the next day, goes, I was wasted. I'm going to rehab. Right. Roseanne Barr was just being Roseanne Barr. Right. Um, I, I, you know, she went for something, didn't quite connect, if you will. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. I, I think if you're going to, uh, you know, try and wreck a song and screw it up, probably don't go with the national anthem. Yeah, I'd say there's other things you could do. That room there for a lot of comedy. Well, how rude. It was pretty rough. On this day in 1997, Green Bay re-signed Brett Favre seven years, $50 million, which at the time was an extraordinary. I mean, Patrick Mahomes makes that every season now. But in 1997, that was some good money. Uh, They did make it to the Super Bowl the following season. They did not win the game. Never got back. Uh, but it was worth it. That stadium was on fire every time he took the field. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, it's, uh, he put uh, butts in the seats. Yeah. I'm not sure what he's up to now other than still denying his involvement in that welfare fund scam down in Mississippi. <sighs> wow, right? what a fall. Guilty as hell, Brett, but you do you. Big movie reviews, the latest news on rock stars, celebrities, and world-class athletes, and plenty of juicy love nuggets, too. We're heading west for Mike Evans' Hollywood Report on the KQ Morning Show. Well, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, good morning, Steve. Good morning, Zeb. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, Minneapolis, St. Paul. We start off with some show business business. As you know, I'm not a big fan of the Disney Corporation. And earlier this week, I told you that employees of Disneyland, California Disney Adventure, Downtown Disney, and other parks had voted to strike against Disney. Well, yesterday, Disney decided to give in to their employees' demands. Guaranteeing, guaranteeing there would be no strike. Well, believe me, that only happened for two reasons. One, it was the right thing to do. And two, Disney didn't want the bad publicity of a strike. Simple as that. Oh, one more telling Disney nugget. The biggest single Disney stockholder has been Ike Perlmutter. Ike Perlmutter, who this week sold his 25.6 million Disney shares for $115 each. That means that I reportedly got a check for $2,944,100,000. Saying the reason he sold, quote, I've lost confidence in Disney management, end quote. Hollywood and politics, I hear that last week, prior to President Biden bowing out, that President Obama and George Clooney made a conference call together to some Hollywood big names, including Barbara Streisand, Jane Fonda, Julia Roberts, and Kerry Washington, asking if they would support when if President Biden bowed out of the race. TV news, sports shorts, I don't have to tell you, but just a reminder, the first NFL preseason game is a week from tonight. Houston, Texas versus the Chicago Bears on ABC and ESPN. So speaking of sports, last year's WNBA All-Star Game without, without sensation, Caitlin Clark drew 1.1 million viewers. 1.1 million viewers. Last Saturday's WNBA All-Star Game with Caitlin Clark drew 3,425,000 viewers on ABC. Boy, Caitlin Clark, what she's done for the WNBA, I can say no more. And the Mike Tyson... Jake Paul fight is back on for November 15th at Cowboy Stadium in Dallas. Uh, Netflix will carry it. They expect to have maybe 15, 20 million viewers. Wow. And a weird, weird movie nugget. So back in 1972, Jerry Lewis wrote, directed, and starred in the movie The Day the Clown Cried. But it was never released. 
But now it is going to be released. The Day the Clown Cried is about a clown in Nazi Germany who was fired from his circus job, goes and gets drunk at a local bar, and starts making fun of Hitler, and he's arrested, and he is forced to spend his time in Auschwitz as a prisoner, only to entertain Jewish children before they are put to death. Harry Shearer, from the longtime Simpsons, many, Harry Shearer is very famous, is one of the very, very few people who have seen this movie and said, it is beyond your wildest comprehension of the worst possible movie that has ever been made. And with that, I can't wait to see it. Uh, heads up, don't forget, tomorrow, movie review of Deadpool and Wolverine. Till then, Mike Evans, see ya. The Mike Evans Hollywood Report, weekdays on the KQ Morning Show. Zip, Tony, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It's Thursday, July the 25th. Good Morgen, as they say where? In Germany? Good I Morgen. So, right? Guten Morgen. Guten Something Morgen. Like Guten Morgen. Um, at 7.50 today, we're going to be giving away Def Leppard tickets. We're going to play a great game called Band or Not a Band. Yeah. 80s edition. Uh, 8.20, we're going to be looking at some next door nightmares. That next door app is just a wellspring of great material. It's a it's a geyser of love yeah. for each other and humanity. Uh, nothing tells us how far removed we are from anything approaching a natural way of living than the next door app. Oh. But boy, that's a lot of fun. Um, uh, we just heard, what was that Boston from the debut album, 1976? That record was everywhere. I remember so many things about the those years, like like my son is 24 now, as of yesterday, huge sports fan, and we'll be talking about uh, the World Series from last year. And I go, wait, who is in it? And he looks at me like, what's wrong with you? But ask me about the 1987 World Series or ask yeah. me about the NBA Finals from any year from 1970 to 2003 or ask me about any football Super Bowl up until the last 10. I mean, I mean, I, I, have, I remember everything about everything from a long time ago. Yeah. I would be thrilled to delete all my 70s sports memories and just get, put the last 10 years in there. I did sports talk radio for years and wouldn't remember year to year who was in anything. I mean, yeah, it's right. crazy. Yeah. My brain, it, it, I, there's not room for new, useless information. Clear all some the, room off the hard drive. The old, useless information is still there. <laughs> I remember the first phone number I ever had. I've not used it since 1975. Right. 301-987-1352. <laughs> Hello, Gormans. That's what you heard if you called that number. 698-1734. Say it again. 698-1734. 1734. I like that. 605-883-4526 is no longer the ranch's phone number, but uh, it was was until about about five years ago, the entire time I grew up. 729-9584. Right, you go- there, there it is. 8675-38. What is it? <laughs> I don't even remember that. 8675309. Uh, I remember my I moved to Kentucky in 1975. That was 502-886-8741. I remember um I, I, well, I and I know more of them. I mean I I remember my my phone numbers from the nineties, Rosemary mm-hmm. and I. And you know, we used to we had a condo and then we had a house, and then we went to here and we had a different number when you'd move move back then. You didn't yes. keep the same number. I remember all of them. There's no reason for me to remember any of this crap. 917-936-1136. That was my cell phone number. My first New York cell phone number. Wow. Why do I still... Ha- I don't need it. Hey, you got look, some sort of savant brain. It's useless. I mean, Completely useless. You can't use it to count cards in Vegas and win a bunch of dough or to really you know go I on could. to Jeopardy. And, and pro- I don't know. Maybe you would do pretty well on Jeopardy. I don't know. Um, I think that and then I watched Jeopardy and realized I would. <laughs> No, no, no. T- a teen Jeopardy, I might have a chance yeah, with. They don't have celebrity one of- Jeopardy. I could have a chance with Jeopardy Jeopardy. I'd get boat race. They don't have that uh, category. Your old phone numbers. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take my old phone numbers for eight hundred, please. Um, oh, what, what about what? So you know, I, again, I would love to get rid of them. Um, oh, another one I, uh, that I still remember. I remember. I. This is a weird one. Birthdays, friends' birthdays. From my life. Now, I have seven siblings, and three of them, I can't tell you their birthday because I, I have a, there, there's some Marches and Aprils, and it's a block in my brain to remember who's on which. Yeah. Literally, it is. 
And I try to figure it out. And every year, I'm like, this is the year I'm going to finally remember Dave, Ann, and Bob's birthdays. It's never happened. All the rest of them, easy as pie. I don't know why. But I know childhood friends' birthdays. People yeah. I haven't seen in decades. No, I couldn't. Oh. Well, their birthday parties were so much fun. They're, they're ingrained in your brain. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I met uh, my, my friend Brooke Lawson, April 8th. That's the day Hank Aaron passed Babe Ruth. Hmm. Those things are li- linked in my brain. The, uh, I, can't, I mean, every April 8th, I'm like, oh, Hank Aaron, B- Brooke Lawson. I mean, they just go together, and it's wow. like, I, I, I don't need to know that. I literally only remember the birthdays I was there for. Uh, oh, the, really? My two children being born and mine. Mm-hmm. I had my brother, my mom and my brother are born, uh, were born on the 18th and the 19th of May each year, including this past year. I got it wrong. Mm-hmm. I was like, happy birthday, mom. Chris's birthday. Ah, dang. Ah. And I can't tell you uh, how many relationships ended prematurely because I forgot the freaking birthday. <laughs> yeah, how convenient. Oh, no, it wasn't even convenient. <laughs> no, I, I mean, it's so embarrassing, you know, and I would remember like the day after, I'd be like, it was your birthday yesterday, wasn't it? I was wondering why you weren't talking to me. <laughs> it's uh, a weird one. Yeah, it's, I just did it br- not long ago, about a year ago, forgot the birthday. And with her all day long, just <gasps> slipped my mind. Oop. Yeah, well... A, a, a good friend of mine from college uh, is celebrating a birthday today, Kevin Dugan. I never knew his birthday <laughs> until I never knew his birthday until my son was born, and then I found out his birthday was the next day. Yeah. I also have a nephew, Ryan, whose birthday is today. So on mm-hmm. July twenty fifth, my son's twenty fourth, and then and then now I just know a guy that I rarely see, but is still a, a, one of my favorite people ever. But the whole time I knew him, I never knew his birthday. But then twenty year twenty four years ago, I realized his birthday was the day after my, and now I think of him every year. It's crazy. Yes. I, I Rachel's love, a Sunday. Yeah. You're right. This is the most useless information ever. There's <laughs> literally nothing you can do with that. Yeah. And yet you're going to struggle to remember what game show we're playing today that you just talked about five minutes ago. I, I, you know, I literally, I, 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 I'm dead serious. I've already forgotten. Uh, first, like first Wi-Fi passwords or first, my first email oh, password. Yeah. I didn't get an email account until the summer of 2000. I mean, I was a little late to the game. <laughs> yeah. I got my first AOL account, and I remember my first password. Yeah. Because I was thinking it should be something about Gorman, maybe. And I'm not saying this because I live in Minnesota now. It was go, go, gophers, gophers. That was my password. Because <laughs> <laughs> it just came to me as I was like, well, it's something about Gorman, and go, go. And I just went, go, go, gophers, go, gophers, go, 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 gophers. Go, go. And so I wrote, go, go, gophers, gophers. And I, that was my long ass password. That's my like first a, AOL. A account. secondary fight song for the University of Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. Go, go, gophers. That was mine it. was mine was very clever. It was Zep 1966, the Attaboy. last year, the year I was born. Atta boy, they could have never hacked that. <laughs> Not I, a I wanted something, I'd, and people would say, "Well, that, I remember at the time I was saying, well, I, that would be pretty easy to guess, wouldn't it?'" And I said, "Well, I, I've got to remember it also." Um, but yeah, now it's now I've got a whole. Now I need a password to get into my passwords because, yeah, there's just too damn many passwords out there and they're constantly making you change them. That would be helpful if I could remember those. But no, I, for some reason, I swear to God, I've never listened to the song maybe once, uh, but I know all the lyrics to Rock and Robin. I oh. don't know. Yeah, I don't why know why. So really? I don't know Rocking in the Treetops all day. I'm not going to sing the whole song. Hopping in a bobbin. I'm going to sing his song. song. Uh, that one and uh, some, uh, you know, uh, embarrassing love songs from the 1970s for some reason. I swear to God, I never listened to them. Uh, mm-hmm. But I can uh, belt out Copacabana. Well, and I write the songs. Well, music gets into your head. And speaking of Barry Manilow, yeah. all the jingles he wrote, mm-hmm. right? Th- those are all. You know, the Kawasaki lets the good times roll. That song yeah. has not been broadcast since like 1970. Yeah, I, I thought it ended in the 90s. <laughs> um, but all the 70s jingles, you deserve a break today. Yeah. Anything you hear a few times like that, if it's set to, to all music, beef patty, special I, sauce, lettuce, cheese, cheese pickles, 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 sure. Have it your way. way yeah. Have it your way. I remember all the uh, songs I learned in French in school, like uh-huh. the songs to teach me the days of the week, the months of the year. I know all the lyrics to the French national anthem. <laughs> I mean, I, I, there's no reason for me to still have that on Allons en fond de la patrie, le jeu de gloire est arrivé, contre nous de la tyrannie. I can do the whole song uh, horribly, but why? 
Can I, how about this? How about I just remember three of my siblings' birthdays instead? It just doesn't happen. Why do certain things stick in your head? I, whenever I took a test in college, a quiz, an exam, the theme song from Casper the Friendly Ghost would not get out of my head. <laughs> Only when I would take a test. Uh, I'm, I'm not kidding. I don't know wow. why. Wow. Uh, Wait, what is the theme song Casper, to Casper the, the Friendly Ghost? always say hello and he's really glad to meet you. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> right. That's right. He was a friendly fellow, wasn't he? Wow. Grown-ups don't understand why children love him the most. <laughs> wow. Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> that's really good. Very annoying. Man, do you remember? That just reminds me of this. Who's the king of animals in Africa? <laughs> Who's the who lives deep in the, the Kimba the White Lion? That was the one. <laughs> Kimba the White Lion <laughs> is his name. <laughs> Man, You're yeah, off in it's the all tulips buried now. in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't even. Of course, the the standards: Gilligan, Brady Bunch. We remember oh, yeah. all the lyrics to all of those. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, I remember the lyrics. I remember when I hear uh, the Go Go's "Our Lips Are Sealed." I f- I will forever say "A la Kazil" because someone in school thought that's what she was singing. <laughs> I thought it was "Honest, I See You." Honest, I, that, that that would work. That's a that's a line for another. That's a new. That's a country song, right? <laughs> I think we used to have to memorize a lot more. So much of it's in my phone now. I have a combination lock and a storage locker, and I have to go to my phone right now. I couldn't tell you what the first numbers are mm. because I always go to my phone. However, mm-hmm. uh, my combination to my Foot Locker in 1984 in basic training is 27817. <laughs> yeah. I'll never oh forget God. it. Yeah. But I literally was at a storage locker a week ago going, oh, and I had to walk back to my truck, get my phone out. And went, All right, there it is. Do you guys do this? I use uh, uh, football players' numbers to remember codes and numbers. Oh, constant. That's it. Yeah, I do that and I associate it. So I remember my own age. <laughs> I'm like, it's, a, it's a Jack Lambert year. I'm yeah. 58. Yeah. It's Jack Lambert this year. That's Next year great. it's going to be uh, Ham. I'm going to be, which one was it? Uh, I'm forgetting his first name. Jack Ham. Jack Ham. Yeah, the other Jack. Yeah, Jack Ham. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, it'll be 59. See how that goes. And then I, then I get into the offensive lineman years. I'm well, going sure. from linebackers <laughs> to offensive <laughs> linemen. And, and oh, some down God. linemen, you know, you had uh, L.C. Greenwood and you had some 60s in there, of course. Course. Wow, that's a, that's a good that's a the, the lineman year. So I mean, that's a good uh, yeah, that's a good, way, that's a good, that's a good way to look at it. I like that. <laughs> Maybe I'll make it to the receiver years. I doubt it. <laughs> As Brian gently approached the lineman years, the softness <laughs> overcame him. Uh, yeah. He wasn't quite so bristly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, um, I, if if you're not feeling bristly yet, this might might tip you in that direction All right. uh, a, a, a series of words I've never thought I would say in the same sentence and we're about to discuss it and those three words are lab grown penises <laughs> hang tight connect with us on the KQ talk and text line 651-989-ROCK that's 651-989-ROCK 92 KQRS I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It's July the 25th, 2024. Slash from Guns N' Roses has a new album out. It's a blues album. It's called Orgy of the Damned, and it's really good. He's got a great crackerjack of a band, and they went into the studio and basically laid down a bunch of tracks live. Every song has a different singer, and it's really, really, really pretty great. Uh, and uh, so celebrating that new album, Orgy of the Damned, along with his Serpent Festival tour, we'd like to send you... So you can win a trip for two to Nashville where you will attend an exclusive slash sound check experience. And then, of course, the gig. Plus, you'll take home an autographed Gibson guitar and his new LP. Text the national keyword guitar to 95819 right now for your chance to win. Yeah. Bing, bang, <laughs> boom. Um, a word on the street from the scientific community um, is that uh, their male fertility across the globe is in crisis. Uh, we see these studies yeah. less and less. Uh, there, there are the, We're having the opposite of a baby boom as a species, yeah. if you will. And in, in Western societies especially, male fertility, like, like men are being measured and there's far less... Uh, a lot less swimmers in the, in the semen. It Who seems like them, across the board. Well, so we've uh, we, you know it's an arc, you know, and we're uh, mm-hmm. you know, we've crested and we're coming back down. That's cool. Now, I, I I blame the microplastics only because that's a word I see and I think <laughs> yeah that sounds like a good villain. Let's blame microplastics because apparently they're in all of our junk anyway. Yeah. Uh, but but here's great news. Okay. Sort of. Uh, an Israeli scientist has produced 
genitals in a laboratory. <laughs> she has literally created <laughs> testicles uh, from cells extracted from mice. Yeah. She hopes to be able to produce human versions of this within five years. Human testicles within five years to be produced in laboratories. Okay. Her goal, it's not to make men redundant. It's not to say we no longer need you, but just to help the global crisis that in male fertility. And she's on the record saying, I'm not trying to get rid of men. We need their chromosomes. We just have to help them. Sure. Um, anyway, she used Thanks, five, five day old mice to produce a testicle organoid, a microscopic <sighs> version of an organ. Then they added hormones and growth medium to try to replicate a, a testes environment. And they were speechless with the results. They went way beyond what they thought they could do. Oh, boy. So when they say grow a pair, yeah, they'll grow, literally grow, be able to grow a pair. You can literally grow a pair of, I just like this word, I've never heard it until this story, organoids. Organoids, organoids. there's your band name right there, man. That's a great band name, the, the organoids. organoids. Mm -hmm. I, so is genitals in a laboratory. I, <laughs> yeah. I would buy the organoids t-shirt if the music sucked. <laughs> I yeah. still buy the T-shirt, and men aren't going to be obsolete. This is not something we have to worry about. We're more than gonads. We're the you we're are? the guys. That, yes, we're the guys that gonads? we're the guys okay. that stare at your boobs when we're talking <laughs> to you. We're the guys that come in and shut off your favorite TV show and turn mm. on sports. Uh, we're the you know the the things that you love about us. You know, the ruining your diet. Um, <laughs> ruining your diet. Bringing a guy friend along when you just thought it was going to be the two of you, you know? These are the kind of things that women would miss. Organoids. You've got the cutest little organoids. The organoids would be a great band name if it's like if it's like a drummer and three guys playing different organs. <laughs> <laughs> and I would organoids. We're here to rock you organoids. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I think guys would probably be for this. You know, so just question. don't bother me. Just go get your organoids out of the cupboard. And well, you are relieving the pressure for sure. It's yeah. like it's like, yeah, I, I we can still we can still have fun in bed, but the pressure's off me to actually plant the seed. Am I legally financially responsible for that ch child if it came from some organoids? What was your question, Ryder? I'm trying to look at the beaker half full here, boys. These are all questions for the prenup. Question yeah. is, if you are somehow are down to just one testicle, do you want a lab-grown one added? Because mm. if I was down to one boob, I'd want the other boob back. You, you only need one. I almost lost a testy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's the that was the softball accident. I took the liner to the oh, nut. sure, yeah. And it uh, swolled up the size of a big old grapefruit. At okay. least, or a modest-sized cantaloupe. Uh -huh. And uh, and the doc and that's what the doc said. She said, "Well, you know, uh, a couple of different things will happen here. It will shrink. It's swollen, obviously, uh, immensely, and it will either uh, reduce in size and eventually disappear and disintegrate, or it will just turn return to it." So I was looking there at a few days of oh boy. I might only have one nut, uh, but I don't think you only need one. I mean, it's, I'm a little lighter, you know, on my step. And besides, they had, we used to throw it around here. I don't know what happened to it, but it was a little egg shaped uh, artificial testicle. You know, kind of like you get implants, guys. Sure. You get an implant there for the other nut. So nah, I don't need it. Um, I, I saw, speaking of uh, guys with one nut, Lance Armstrong walked into yes. a, uh, this is a true story. Lance walked Armstrong, into a bar. Lance Armstrong <laughs> walked into a bar in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, there was an event going on and he was with somebody that knew somebody that I knew. And there was a bunch of people in this room and he walked in and my buddy Santo loudly Everyone heard it said, that guy's got some ball coming in here. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's <laughs> <was> pretty great. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, there was the old, uh, I know we had uh, one of our English, uh, and I'm talking UK listeners one morning sing it for us, that old World War II song, Hitler only had one ball. You know that one? Is that a true fact? Yeah, I know. They used really? to sing it as kids. She said, yeah, post-World okay. War II, we used to. Saying Hitler only had one, was it ball or not? Huh. I don't know. Maybe he it. needed a organoid. Oh, yeah, he only, he only, only had, had one. Yeah. a lot happier planet. Maybe. Okay. Sometimes you feel like a nut and sometimes you don't. <laughs> sometimes oh, you want, want to miss one. Joy. <laughs> oh. You know, there's some like art student out there who's like, well, I was studying some of his paintings and I struck me as a man with one nut. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to always make the connections. It's not there. uncommon, I understand. I have several friends. It, uh, yeah, it comes up eventually. Uh, Organoids in a lab. Yeah. That's what that's what we're coming down to here. You know what? There there are signs that maybe 
But, I mean, humans have had a great run. You know what I mean? We, yeah. we, 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 mm -hmm. we developed all this great stuff. We ruined the planet. And the only people that are going to suffer is us. Because the animals will be fine. The planet's going to be fine. Yeah. Maybe maybe this is just, maybe our testes are just a little ahead of the curve. <laughs> beyond our, they're, they're, they're telling us, guys. We, yeah. we, we, let's just shut it. We got a couple hundred years left. <laughs> tops. There's going to be a, there's going to be a time when there's only a handful of folks left. And they'll just, they'll just have to start over. Let nature take its course. I always, I always, I, I saw a documentary once. I thought it was really poorly done, but I do have a fascination, <laughs> and I think about the, it, this document. This is years ago, but it planted this thing in my head where I do think about. I love the idea. I don't love the idea of humanity disappearing, but the, it's fascinating to imagine, like, just next time you're looking at the Minneapolis downtown skyline, just imagine if the humans all went away. Like, what would it look like in 100 years? Yeah, like the what, last of how, us. How tall would the, great, would the grass go? How tall would the, you know, yeah, you just think the about, Timberwolf like... Timberwolf would return to uptown. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, other than us being dead part. Yeah, I mean, if... It's fa fascinating to see, like, well, there was that great, uh, there was a great thing on YouTube from Yellowstone when they reintroduced wolves and how it changed the entire ecosystem. Yeah, it, did. it changed the way the river, the course of the rivers. Right. Like, it changed the riverbanks so that they flowed more. I mean, it's just one thing being reintroduced. It just changed everything about Yellowstone National Park. An example would be the pandemic. Remember the pandemic when a society worldwide shut down, all of a sudden rivers were clearer, smog was disappearing. For the first time, they could see cities in China from space mm -hmm. that were otherwise covered yeah. by smog. And uh, I forget there were, I mean, like within six months, yeah, the right planet away. was turning it around. I was there like, was well, a, that was quick. There were, there were um, in the in the weeks following 9-11, just without airplanes in the sky, the difference in, um, was it, were we still trying to fix the ozone? The difference in the, the things in the atmosphere, yeah, just in the, one the week, and, yeah, in one yeah. week, they were like, whoa, right. holy crap. Like, yeah. you know, it makes a big difference so i guess what we're saying is let's just all walk into the ocean and fix the planet <laughs> I, don't, I didn't I don't think know. that was coming um speaking of hey you know you know who's got some organoids you know who's got some big organoids um but if you if you ever buy a lottery ticket i've had this thought like are you sure like you know if you go buy a lottery ticket yeah. you're, at the, you're at the gas station or you're at the convenience store and they have the little thing it says check your winning numbers here and you slide your ticket under the scanner it reads the barcode yeah. and it'll say Winner, $4. Mm -hmm. Or it just says, not a winner. And I never trust it. I, I don't trust it either. I, I just think that, you know what? I'm No, I'm going to look up the numbers online and yes. look at my ticket because I don't time. believe it. Uh, I don't trust those readers. But it never occurred to me the guy behind the counter is trying to screw me over. But check this out. This just happened in Tennessee. A gentleman in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, got a phone call. It was a police detective. He said, hey, are you... Joe Schlobotnik. And he said, yes, I am, whatever his name was. And the detective said, I, I think you uh, are uh, going to be surprised to hear this. You are the, you won a lottery $1 million jackpot. And the guy goes, what are you talking about? He goes, you bought a scratch off that won. And I'm calling to tell you the good news. You were at a shell station last week, blah, blah, blah. And here's, here's how this, this is what happened. Guy walks in, buys a couple scratch off tickets, scratches them off right there on the spot, hands them to the clerk and says, hey, tell me if either of these hit. Oh, the clerk man. said, oh my God, this one's good for 40 bucks, which it was. The second ticket, the clerk scanned it and it came up. It's a million dollar winner. And the clerk just threw it in the trash can and said, Sorry, you got 40 on the first one, nothing on the second one. You and the guy that. said, Okay, took us 40 bucks and felt good about it. Yeah. Well, a few days later, this phone call comes and he says to the detective, He goes, well, how, how do you know? How did you find me? What, is, what are you talking about? Apparently, any big winning ticket like that, they investigate before they just to say, So this is what happened. The clerk tried to cash it in. He yeah. recognized it was a winner, threw it in the trash, and then as soon as this customer left, he picked it out of the trash can. Goes to claim it. What the lottery commission does is then they say, okay, we have to see your CCTV footage of the sale because they know exactly when it was sold. Don't. Like, if you say, here's my winning ticket, mm -hmm. they scan it, and it says 4.32 p.m. on the 12th, and there yeah. it is. They go in, they look at the security camera footage, and the, the commission sees this kid throw the ticket in the trash can. They Amazing. see it clear as day. And, the, and they call the police, and the police investigate it. Not only that, they identify the rightful owner from that video.
Unbelievable. Wow. Find him, track him down. Dude gets a phone call from a cop. Hey, I got a million dollars for you. Come claim it. I mean, it's really Big Brother stuff. However, in yeah. this case, <laughs> it, it works out. You yep. know, the, the good guys win and the bad guy gets, I assume, probably charged with some sort of lottery he, fraud. Yeah, what's He's the penalty? It's a, it's a felony theft charge. Um, it's a 22-year-old kid who is not nearly as smart as he thinks he is. The wow. detective said... Um, this is really obvious. It's good enough if you put it in front of 12 jurors, they will reach the conclusion. There's no getting yourself out of this one. Yeah. He stole a million dollars, basically. Yeah. Like, if he right. went in and robbed a bank, he'd definitely be going to jail. Yep. Yeah, yeah, he would. I mean, yeah, no doubt. And uh, it, uh, he didn't think it out very well, did he? Because no. they're at least going to ask. We all They always know where it was sold. Yeah. And, oh, so you're the winner. And I see it was sold here at this uh, convenience store, I think you said, uh, which you happen to be an employee of. I mean, stop right there. <laughs> this is why you need a lot of friends in your life you rarely speak to anymore that you trust. Yep. You have to then call someone on the snot, say, hey, come in here, and when I turn away, jump behind the counter and act like you're stealing cigarettes, but take something out of the trash. <laughs> you know, you got to have, have gangster friends that you need in a pinch. Doug, that's you if you're listening this morning, by the way. We haven't spoken in a while. I apologize. But if I win a million dollars, if I'm trying to scam someone yeah, out of a million dollars, right, right. You know who to call. I'm calling Doug. Oh, I got, I got a whole, I got like three names off the top of my head right away I know yeah. I can call. I mean, would you... They, Do I you think give, they might screw you out of it? No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. It's people that you know. They're just they're just Trust down. Them. You know. You know. What 50, do they say? 50. What do they say? Your good friend is the guy you call when you get arrested, and your best friend is the guy who got arrested with you. Yes. See, you got to have those people. You got to know where the lines are. All right. Um, on this day in 1980, as I already mentioned once, ACDC released a little record called "Back in Black." It's the biggest selling rock album ever, and you will be hearing songs from that album throughout the entire day, song by. song. Song, in fact, right after the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS, celebrating 44 years of an awesome landmark album, Back in Black. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It's July 25th today. That was Def Leppard, and they will be playing Target Field on August the 19th. Holy smokes, Def Leppard still doing what they do. And we are about to give away a couple of tickets. Callers 9 and 2 right now at 651-989-ROCK will have a chance to play four Def Leppard tickets. Get on the horn as we speak. 651-989-ROCK. As we line up a couple of callers, I will just say, you know, the old joke um, uh, that, that people say, and I've said, oh, it's my favorite nine arm band um, because it's the only one I can think of. <laughs> I, I, but it's a good I, one. But I mean it when I say that. And I, I think Def Leppard should have been put into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the minute they decided to wait for Rick Allen to figure out how to play a drum kit with one arm. Or at least the Humanitarian Hall of Fame. I, you know, those of us that have never been in a big time rock band uh, thought it was pretty remarkable too because that's how business is done. He lost his arm. We're like, well, he's done. He's not going to drum anymore. And to take that hiatus at the peak of their star power. Uh, on the heels of Pyromania, yeah. they have exploded worldwide. And then they're like, oh, three years on the shelf? Okay, well, let's wait till he's ready. Um, I, and I've said this before, and this is not a joke, and this is not even a slight against my former bandmates. They would have been lining up auditions, driving to the hospital to see if I was okay. <laughs> and, I would, yeah. and I would have understood it. I would have, it would have never occurred to me in a million years as a drummer in a big rock band Laying in bed, waking up with one arm, I would have never even thought for a million a million minute. Yeah, oh, hang on, let me let me figure this out. I right. would have been like, I guess I'll get get on some radio. I'll do some writing. I can still type with one hand. I mean, I right. would have thought about anything other than right. drumming. What well, yeah. can I play with one hand? A trumpet? It's amazing. Uh, but they, I, 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 and I don't think we could ever overstate how cool. Just what the bro yeah. code that they were living by. No, he's our drummer. This is our band. We're doing it. Yeah, Amazing. Right. That, that's rare. Now I'm remembering the time that I broke my collarbone playing football. And as I'm laying there, it has been diagnosed. I'm just laying there on the field. My brother runs up and grabs my helmet. 
I said, what are you doing? He goes, oh, you've got a much nicer helmet than I do. You're done. Yeah, right. Well, he's well, an I opportunist. might not be yeah. done. Uh, but yeah, he got my helmet out of the uh, My brother, Dave, was, uh, my parents were taking, he's four years older than me. They were taking him to college. They were loading up. I said, all right, see you in a couple of weeks. And all I knew was this, I'm getting his room now. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. And they walked to the carport and they were loading up and I'd already said goodbye. And he forgot something and he walked into his bedroom and every, <laughs> everything on his wall i'd already taken down and i kid you not less than two minutes oh my gosh oh it was it was like before i go to school let me kick your ass one last time i was like sorry sorry it was like a big it was like man didn't he he wasn't even in the car yet and i was like you'll never see these posters again this room is mine baby all right, we got a couple people locked in and loaded. We're ready to play a great game here for Def Leppard tickets. Before we bring on caller number one, Tony, what are we playing today? We're going to 80s it up. This is fun. Wow. Yeah, we're always entertained <laughs> by and on the hunt for words or phrases or combinations that would make for great band names. So are these actual band names or are they made up and do not or did not exist as far as we know? With uh, Journey and Def Leppard ticks at stake. And because our KQ 80s boat cruises tomorrow night, we're going with band names from the 80s. I like it. That is sensational. All right. Caller number one, who have we got? Our buddy Dave from St. Anthony. Dave, good morning, <laughs> sir. Morning. Hey, Dave, were you ever in a band in the 80s? I actually was in a band in the 80s. Nice. What was the band called? We called ourselves the Mods, kind of after the old Who stuff. Yeah, I like that. The Mods probably got the little Vespa scooter rocking and the overcoats, the London Fog. Yeah, hell yeah. Good tie scene. Uh, Well, right on, Dave. We're playing, uh, what is it called, Tony? Sorry, Band or No Band? Band, not a band. Band, not a band, 80s version. Uh, We will not be suggesting the Mods to Dave because he knows the answer. But uh, the rest, I wish you the best, sir. Tony, take it away. Okay, our first band, number one, the band is called Reflex. Band, not a band, real or not? You say we, like W? Reflex, R-E, reflex. That sounds 80s. Correct. Davo, one for one. Good start, brother. All right. Number two, getting gnarly with Chris Farley. Band, not a band. <laughs> uh, I used to get gnarly with Farley, but that's not not a band. Correct, that is made up. It's utter nonsense. <laughs> utter nonsense, spelled U-D-D-E-R. That's a band name. <laughs> Number three is Scritty Politty. You know, that... I'm going to say, yeah, that's 80. Hell yes, it yeah, is. Dave. Yeah. All right, Dave, you're three for three. Keep it up, brother. Three more to go, Dave. Number four is Children's Food. Children's food. <laughs> uh, how about no? Correct. Wow. The, the front man would have been Mr. Don Gorbin. Yeah, that's right. Pizza. <laughs> I can't eat that. That's children's food. <laughs> you go to Taco Bell if you want to give me something. <laughs> <laughs> A man loved the Enchirito. What can I say? That black olive. I can't fault him uh, for that. Set him free every time. Dave, you're four for four. Right on. All right. Number five is Tangerine Dream. That's totally 80s for sure. Correct. Known for the Risky Business soundtrack. The most iconic scene in terms of memes and stuff is Cruz dancing in his underwear. The most useless scene in the movie. It serves no purpose. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Just Just stuck it in there. But maybe that's just me. All right, Dave, you are five for five, brother. One more and you have hit for the perfect cycle. Good luck. All right, buddy. Your last one. Not my cup of Mr. T. Uh, nope, that's not 80. Correct. Man. That is made up also. I, tell I you, really wanted that one to be real. <laughs> <It too. laughs> that's fantastic, Dave. Uh, if you want to play a game like this, you want to see someone bat a thousand, you go right to a member of the mods. That's going to be the recipe yeah. for success every time. <laughs> right on, Dave. Oh, by the way, what kind of music were the mods? Were you were you were you taking cues from the hum, the Who musically, or were you going more like Paul Weller in the Jam? What was the vibe? Uh, we played I Can't Explain, we played Jumpin' Jack Flash and Slow Down. All right. 
All right, that is, you can't go wrong. You start with Jumper Jack Flash, the rest is going to be good. Dave, very well played. In fact, perfectly played. We're going to put you on hold. It's time for caller number two. Who have we got? Doug, Ryder, who's up on Doug two? Doug in Apple Valley. Doug, good morning, sir. Good morning. Doug, were you, by any chance, in a band in the 80s? Uh, I was not, <sighs> but I see that that could have been beneficial. <laughs> Might have been. Well, 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 let Whoa. me ask you this. If you had been in a band in the 80s, what instrument would you have played? Definitely the uh, electric guitar. Oh boy. Nice. All right. Doug Van Halen, contestant number two today. <laughs> Let's see what you got, brother. Here we go. All right. All right, Mr. Man, your first one is Chest Hair Bacon Bits, band not a band. Chest Hair Bacon Bits. Uh, I'm going to go not a band. Boom. It's not. No, but if it's been a good night, I wake up with bacon <laughs> bits and that my is, chest hair. Sure. I you know, think on that one. Uh, and, and if you were drinking strawberry wine, you'd wake up and go, chest hair, bacon bits, strawberry wine. Because that's another one of those musical hooks that I put words into despite my better efforts not to. All right, Doug, one for one. Keep it up, brother. Doug, number two is Fun Boy 3. Fun Boy 3. Ah, uh, sure, I'll go with that. That seems like an 80s pop band. You oh, are correct. Yeah. Wow. My ex-girlfriend Susie used to call me Fun Boy 1 <laughs> because of that band. <laughs> they had a hit with the Go-Go's Our Lips Are Sealed as well. Oh, but, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's the first thing that came to mind. All right, Doug, two for two, brother. All right, sir, your next cut, or your next band, I'm sorry, is Information Society. That was a band from the 80s, yes. Yes, it was. Wow. They called them InfoSock from Minnesota, actually. Mm -hmm. Three for three, Dougie. Let's keep it up. Doing good, Dougie. Number four, Romulan Dinner Party. Romulan Dinner Party. Whoa. Whoa. I'm going to say not a band. Tis not. Wow. Not a Ooh. band. Uh, two Star Trek references mm -hmm. in this uh, for this contestant. I'd be willing to bet. It. I'd be willing to bet somebody thought of it though, just didn't use it. They yeah. didn't, just didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, I know some of these probably exist. But yeah, that's didn't get a contract. All right, two more for you. Next one is Gene loves Jezebel. Gene, I'm gonna go band. It's got an 85. Yes, yes, it does. True. <laughs> All right, Doug, if you get this one, sir, you have also run the table, and we'll have to go into tiebreaker mode. Good luck. Wow, it's exciting. The last one, the last band, is Yerp de Derp. Yerp de Derp. Yerp de Derp. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um... I'm going to go, no, not a band. Yeah! Correct. You're P. Derp. Derp. Not, not, not a band. I didn't know. I, I, I'd never heard of them, but I thought that sounds, somebody could have gone for it. Mm -hmm. That was for the uh, Muppet Swedish chef Jezebel, here. Yerp, the, that was, those, those were, uh, it, it definitely could have been a band. No doubt about it. It sounded like they could have opened for Kraftwerk. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> Some kind of robot pop combo. I'm just here for the opening band, Yerp de Derp. <laughs> mm -hmm. Make sure you come down to the show early. Yerp de Yerp starts at 8 sharp. <laughs> Don't miss them. That's spectacular. All right, Dave and Doug both went six for wow. six. That is outstanding work, gentlemen. It's tiebreaker time, and so what we do is Tony's going to ask a question that will probably have nothing to do with 80s band names, and you'll both give us an answer. Closest to the correct answer wins all the bacon, or in this case, the Def Leppard tickets. Dave, we're going to ask you first, sir. Tony, what do you got? Guys, what is the world record for the most people surfing on one surfboard at the same time? <laughs> huh. Wow, Dave! Just general you're up. knowledge, I think. But <laughs> let's see. Um, Twenty-seven. Oh, Holy right. smokes! You got some long boards out there, man. All right, Doug. Uh, did you hear the question? I did not hear the question. Sorry, Doug. What is the world record for the most people surfing on one surfboard at the same time? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, Oopty derp. 
Yeah, let's go derpy derp on this one. <laughs> it's it's um, your pity derp. I correct you. Oh man, I don't. I'm gonna say uh, twenty. All right, Tony. The correct answer is forty-seven. Whoa, forty-seven whoa. people on a board. They were stacked up high. Uh-huh. I mean, so a surfboard, the long boards, come in about twelve feet or so. Yeah. Wow. Four people a foot. Maybe I'm, on the shoulders. Yeah, a lot, be, lot of shoulder play. Yeah, I must have one of those pyramid things going. All right. Well, Dave, uh, at 27, is the closest to 47. Dave, you have won tickets to see Def Leppard and Journey and Steve Miller Band uh, at uh, Target Field August 19th. Doug, man, really well played, brother. Sorry to say. you didn't. It's tough to see someone go six for six and come up short, but you know what? That's why they play... All 90 minutes or 60 minutes or all four quarters or all three periods. Well played, gentlemen. Great to have you both on the show. Thanks. All right. right. Man, that was... uh... Uh, There is a video. This record is not that old. Only goes back to 2015, or that's when it was posted on YouTube anyway. But there they all are. It's a larger board, I will say that. So uh, this isn't a traditional surfboard. Mm -hmm. One person, I don't think, be able to handle this. But they're there. They're not stacked up. It's just a big swinging crowd on there. Yeah. And they're surfing. They're all surfing. Yeah, wow. look, look having a good go. time. Yeah, and they're pumping their fists, and there it is. All right. Hmm. Yeah. I do have a cut from Europe de Derp. <laughs> no, oh, that hurts. Pretty not good. Bad. Yeah. Well, yeah, now, now gonna I'm be... going to be bruised. <laughs> <laughs> People would be like, did Rosemary choke you last night? It was oh, kind of like a hickey from here. Right. Yeah, wow. That was, <laughs> Steve's got a hickey. That was unfortunate. <laughs> that's a great That's that's a great hickey cover-up. Uh, phil- walk around just doing that. Like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I must have done this bruise to myself. I certainly wasn't making out at the prom last night. <laughs> Trying to play popcorn on my throat. Imagine my surprise to have teenage kids in the teens of this century and discover hickeys were still a thing. Mm. Yeah. I had no idea. I thought that literally went away in the 60s because when know. I was coming up, that wasn't happening anymore. Oh, no, we had them. Did you? Yeah. Well, South Dakota, guess- you know, we're a decade or two behind yeah. trend-wise. We, we but, yeah, we're too. still... Uh, Trying to make the hip hickeys happen. Not something I could really make happen. In fact, I was so determined. I had a young girlfriend that wanted a hickey. It was a status symbol, and I could just not figure out. I just didn't have the right amount of suck, I guess. Mm-hmm. And wow. so I'm like, well, by God, I'm going to give her one. And then she screamed and said, you're biting me. I'm like, well, I don't know how else to make <laughs> the freaking mark. It's, yeah, they're dumb. They hurt. Yeah. What? What? I, I, yeah, I never even tried. No one ever gave me one. I never even tried to give one. Oh, what, what do we do? You're uh, just nibbling a little. I, and Dale like Ike could give them. She would. I mean, I'd look at you and you'd get a hickey. But yeah, she. Yeah. Uh, you'd feel like you're getting a pack, and you'd have this big, deep purple uh-huh. hickey. You know, the size of a quarter on your neck. She was a a master at it, really. Wow, no, I'm glad glad I missed that. What we used to do is we would just shave each other's entire bodies, but that's a whole mm-hmm. different. That's yeah, a, there's a lot of status to that just, as that's well. A, that's an early '80s Kentucky thing. It's there's in no the need, book. No need to go into that. It's in the book. Um, <laughs> hey, the, speaking of great '80s band names, the Rock the Boat '80s cruise is sold out. And we just want to say thanks for everybody who uh, picked up those tickets. We're going to have a blast. That's tomorrow night, Stillwater Riverboats. However, tomorrow morning on this very show, the last two tickets on Earth will be given away. <laughs> we'll be giving them away, so you don't want to miss your chance tomorrow to get on there. To, uh, hot Buttered Popcorn. Is yes, that the name of that song? That's right. That yeah. is exactly what it is. Um, are you hip to the Next Door app, or have you just had Next Door neighbors that you're still telling stories about? 651 651- 989 Rock is the KQ Talk and Text Line. Next door nightmares. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line. 651 989 Rock. That's 651 989 Rock. 92 KQRS. <laughs> <laughs> Whoo, man. What do they say? Fences build great. Fences great make great neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Uh, the 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 next door neighbor, the next door app, the bane of our existence. Oh it's, man, it's just it's great for entertainment purposes. Mm-hmm. Never had it myself, but I love people's stories about it. You yeah. know, I love when they bring up next door app stories. Neighbors are weird mm-hmm. and uh, very nosy. V- nosy is not out. Nosy is very in. I don't have it. Uh, Rosemary has the next door app, um, and she has a few friends where they will catch up and how's it going, and then they'll share next door stories from their apps from respective different yeah. parts of you know different cities they live in sure. um but they're just so great i love the things that people post on on these apps 
it's an amazing thing. I told a story once of a neighbor who just wrote a nice note about thanking the paper boy for such great delivery of his morning newspaper. And every comment from our neighbors was, well, tell him that I want the paper not on my bushes next time. Tell him to strip throwing the paper on the roof. Tell him he needs to double bag it on rainy days. There was like 40 comments ripping the paper boy apart. <laughs> the paper and I just boy. thought that's, 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 that's what a nice message gets you. Set him up to knock him down. I love uh, these next door posts. If you've got any to share with us or even just stories about your crazy next door neighbors, feel free. 651-989-ROCK is the KQ Talk and Text Line. This is a very simple one. I love it. Someone keeps delivering soup to my house with a note that says, quote, soup for my perfect little soup boy. Uh, uh, wow. And then what? he goes, I appreciate the free food, but I don't like soup. Please stop this. <laughs> but you're the little soup boy. I would l- I've would. i spent my life trying to earn little perfect soup boy stripes. I love soup. I eat it all the time. You you eat that? But does he eat it? I don't know if I'd eat the mystery soup. No. I guess I just like that he goes, please, I appreciate it, but I don't like soup. How about the fact that someone's referring to someone else who's a homeowner right. as a perfect little soup boy? I yeah, thought right. of you the other day. Facebook always has groups you may be interested in joining. One of them is soup lovers. Yeah. <laughs> there's like 100,000 people. Oh, I might have to check that one out. How much can you say about soup? I guess there's a, right. a lot to be said. I did receive a, uh ended a relationship. Uh, you know, it wasn't her. It was me. And she, I love chocolate chip cookies. My favorite. She makes really good chocolate, chocolate chip cookies. And I come out of the house one day and there on the front step is a large Tupperware of her chocolate chip cookies mm-hmm. with a note that says, no hard feelings. P.S. There's no rat poison in these. Ha ha. Oh boy. And I was like, well, don't eat it. Now that I didn't, <laughs> I kept, not a chance. I kept uh-huh. the Tupperware though. But I mean, I was like, are you kidding <laughs> sure. me? Now I can't eat these. I don't know. She doesn't oh. seem like the type probably wasn't, but Yowza. did you have to put the P.S. on? Mm, this no. is the, the, anything that just you know you, you, you there's nothing worse than you like you get into a new place you're like oh my god this is the greatest neighborhood i'm so happy i'm here as long as you don't meet the neighbors you you can believe you can still suspend that uh that myth the suspended animation that yeah. you enjoy here's a post on the next door app Yesterday, I was on one of my evening walks when I passed someone in their front yard talking on the phone. As I walked by, said person passed gas rather loudly without (laughs) even trying to conceal it. Naturally, this upset me and ruined my train of thought, not to mention it smelled. If you feel like you need to break wind, please do it in a place that won't affect (laughs) passersby. If you go outside... Please go to your backyard or another place that is away from the public eye. Let's all work to make our community better. What is this, Disney World? I, I, (laughs) let me tell you something. There's a whole lot of places I will fart my front yard first on the list. Oh, yeah. That's why you have a front yard. Yeah. Yeah. Is this America or what? Gracious. This one's old school. Someone actually put it up in their apartment building, the note, and underneath the note is a Ziploc bag full of candy, small little bite-sized candies. Mm -hmm. And the note reads, I'm genuinely sorry. I'm learning the bugle. It's for an audition. It will end before March. Oh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. The yeah. few things, uh, the only thing worse than that would be, I guess, your neighbor learning the bagpipes. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I like this one. The, the, and by the way, um, uh, our neighborhood, we lived in Nashville forever. Uh, there was a lot of older folks in the neighborhood, and we watched people get more and more comfortable with the Internet. Mm-hmm. Like literally over time, you you know the same people, and at first it would just you can tell as somebody's just getting more and more comfortable with the whole process, you know, and <laughs> you know what starts as just an innocent question then turns into the great American novel three years oh, later, God, yes. and there's a handful of people, and and my wife knows them all by their handle on the next door app. Okay. They're just the craziest requests. I mean, you know, I've got family coming in. Does anyone have a bumper for a crib? <laughs> I'm like, what? Why not? Yeah, it's in use. Well, I'll, yeah, let me give you the thing that keeps my baby safe in the crib. Or, you know, like, what? Or there's just, or, or like, so many things people ask for. Does anybody have, and it would be like, um, I, you know, like, a, a going out, we're going to go watch movies in the park. Does anybody have a blanket that's good for grass? Yeah. You're just mm-hmm. like, what? Yeah, it's called my blanket. Any blanket. Any. Yeah, your blanket, and then shake it off when you're done with it. Listen to this. This is an honest to God post. My husband is gone to get some cancer treatments, and I need to help put my dog in my trunk. Car. 
I need help to put my dog in my trunk's car. He drowned in my pool under the solar sheet, and I had some help to put him in a thick plastic bag and put him in the backyard at one foot deep. What? I just received a call that I have to bring my dog to the cremation place at 10.30 a.m., all caps, TODAY, which is the only chance I have to do it. You will have to dig a little and take my dog with the bag and double it with a second thick bag and put it for me in my trunk. And then in all caps, I just cannot do it. Please help. Uh, Happy to help. Sorry, Mabel. No. Uh, why don't you wrap that up with, and I'll pay you 500 bucks to do it. I'm not double bagging your dog that mm-hmm. I just dig up from your backyard. Man, that's a rough one. I think we have a yeah. caller. Austin's on the horn on the KQ Talk and Text line. Good morning, sir. Good morning. What do you got for us? So, uh, before I was born, my parents moved into their new house, and the previous owners had all these red and white plants out in the front yard. It's like a bed of red flowers and then white flowers, red flowers, whatever. And literally, as soon as the previous owners backed out of the driveway, this ancient, terrifying German woman who lives next door <laughs> comes over with a trowel in her hand and she starts replanting all of them so it goes red, white, red, white, red, white without <laughs> any, any asking, any prompting, nothing. Just, I've always wanted to do this. They wouldn't let me do it for them. Okay. So that's what happened. <laughs> wow. And that's yeah. why she didn't kill someone. Wow. All right. There's OCD right there. Man. Yeah, no kidding. That's pretty strong. <laughs> that's pretty great. Welcome I to the bet neighborhood. She, I bet she slept so well that night. Oh, she man. was dreaming of strudel and sure. you know gingerbread houses. I don't know a big mug of pilsner or something like that. Like red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. She kept walking over to her window to check. Yeah, there they are. Red, white, red, white, red, white. And her grandson was Jack White of the White Stripes. <laughs> and he had a red, white color scheme for one of the oh. most successful indie rock bands of all time. Austin, thanks for the call, brother. Uh-oh. Here's another post. Right, thank you. Here's another. They, these are real next door app posts. Someone keeps farting in my mailbox late at night. <laughs> I can on. hear it outside the window, and I smell it every time I check my mail. What? Uh, this is getting old. It's extremely childish. My bills and coupons smell so bad I can't even pay them or use them at the grocery store. Anyone in my neighborhood, please keep an eye out for the brown eye. I will catch <laughs> the flatulent phantom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alert. Alert. The neighborhood alert for the brown eye. Uh, that's not possible. That's not happening. It's no. No, you're crazy. You're nuts. <laughs> Uh, by the way, how how do you fart into a mailbox? Uh, you, you, get a, you need a little step. It depends on the mailbox. Yeah, someone you know? has to hoist you up. Is it a mail? Is it one of those bank? Yeah, right. Exactly. There's a joke in there. Can I get that, on your shoulders, Tony? <laughs> I mean, I'm reminded of the. Uh, you know, did you hear about the guy who twisted his ankle playing golf? He fell off the ball wash. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> just, uh, there's something odd about farting into a mail. Most mailboxes are not waist high. No. You know, and it, you can't trap it in there. It's not going to stick. Most are not going to stick to your mail. That's just good old fashioned crazy. Once right you put there. one in there, too, does it pop the flag up? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always the goal. <laughs> um, uh, this is here. Listen to this. Uh, sometimes the comments, the, re, the, rec, the the comments are the funny part. Someone wrote, "I found an electronic device on the road in the neighborhood. I hope someone can claim it. Text or call me at and list their number." Like, okay. And then someone's response was, is it a lawn chair? <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Uh, like, what in the world? Uh, here's one. If you're going to do stuff, close the windows. Honestly, not that hard. Why would you want anyone to hear you? We hear you at 12 p.m., 12 a.m. and 10 p.m. Just Ooh. close the window. No one wants to hear you having sex. Oh, well, that's I mean, good for them. I'm a little uh, envious. My God. And on a regular schedule, no less. I wonder if there's two people involved. Uh, well, on that topic, here's one. Just a friendly reminder that you may want to, A, buy some blinds, or B, turn off the lights. We could see your sexy times from the road. Cool German flag, though. <laughs> Oh, I like the German flag touch. Uh, here's a good one. Hi, all. We Now we all use devices to connect to the internet and whatnot. And my grandkids come over and use their phones and iPads, too. Well, the other day, my grandson went to connect to the Wi-Fi, and our neighbor's router name is 
All cops are buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> now my wife and I are very upset because he started crying, and we had to explain to him that indeed all cops are not buttholes. It's just generally a rude thing to broadcast. <laughs> Is there any way I could possibly block this signal or possibly call the non-emergency police and have them go over to issue a stern warning? <laughs> I bet they wouldn't like to hear about a network called All Cops Are Buttholes. Any ideas, guys? Uh, let it go. Oh, and, of yeah. course, the first comment. Say, they should simply change the word R to have, and it'll be a learning opportunity. All cops oh, have cops buttholes. Have buttholes. Yeah. Just as like far as we know. Oh, it's simple. How about this? So, whoever just told my dog to shut the F up needs to come to my house and speak to me or my husband directly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, guys, did you move? Your Wi-Fi isn't working anymore. <laughs> Nick, it's a post-it on their door. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's great. Uh, oh, that's good. Yeah, the... Uh Boy, not, I, we had a we had a neighbor in Atlanta before before uh, there were next door apps. There, then it was just old getting to know the neighbors. And yeah. Rosemary and I, the first our first house we moved into, uh, directly across the street was a woman, a single mom with like an eight year old boy. And we had a dog that loved kids, and we had cats, and we were in our front yard a lot. We'd sit in the yard, had a screened in porch, and uh, neighbors to the left, hey, how's it going? Good to see you. Neighbors to the right, how's it going? Good to see you. Diagonally across the street, hey, what's up? Hey, how's everybody? Right across the street, woman and her single kid, they would pull the car in, they would get out of their car and go right to the house. I mean, straight line. When they left the house, they would walk right to the car and leave. They never acknowledged, <laughs> never looked up, both of them, the woman and the kid, never, ever acknowledged anything. They were Refused to uh, to uh, to do anything with any neighbors, All right. and so Rosemary and I immediately then started calling. The, we just referred to them as witness protection. <laughs> They're obviously hiding, and there's witness protection going sure. on. And we'd lived there for probably a year, and our next door neighbor came over once, and we were just tired. He goes, "Hey, have you ever have you met witness protection yet?" And we looked at him, <laughs> we're like, "What?" He goes. Oh, I'm, I, you know those people over there? I just assume they're in witness protection. And we were like, that's what we think. <laughs> and we were just totally like, oh, my God, that's so funny. He goes, oh, yeah. He goes, well, you're like the third. So-and-so said that to me once. And I was like, that's what I think. So all of everybody had the same thought because it's just a totally friendly wave and say hi neighborhood. And yeah, these, this something. woman and this boy, they were in they had they were like in a in a circle of trust of two people. Yeah, they had nothing to do with anybody. And I, the only time, I, five years, I interacted with her one time. And it was because our dog, Clementine, I'm walking her, and she saw a few squirrels. And I just, you know, what the heck, they weren't there. And we we're on their side of the street. And I let her go sniff in this person's yard. A little small, you know, sure. little, little yard. Yeah. And, and the car, pull, she pulled up, and I'm standing in her front yard with my very large dog, and she pulls up, and I'm like, oh, man, this will be weird. And yeah. I feel we, I'm trespassing, kind of. This mm -hmm. is odd. <laughs> And this woman opened the door to a car. Her son got out, and she leads me. and goes, "Hey, how's it going?" And I went, "Oh, good. The, yeah, the dog's just. Um, she saw a squirrel, and I'm just. She goes, "Oh, yeah, great looking dog. I see her all the time. Anyway, all right, good." And they just kept going in, and I thought, "Okay, the door's open. That's great. Now we can do this." <laughs> Literally two days later, on the sidewalk, <laughs> car pulls in. Nothing. Looks down. Doesn't. Uh, when she it. had to address me, she couldn't find a way out of it. Right. And mm -hmm. that convinced me even more that she witness was in witness protection. protection. Yes. Yeah. Maybe it yeah. was that uh, Chuck Paholnik. I always I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Paholnik. Paholnik. Yeah. yeah. The book Choke. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, maybe she stole Love the him. kid. Maybe she kidnapped the kid. <laughs> that was the whole premise of the <laughs> yeah, book. There you go. That could you know be what? it. You know, That's she nabbed a kid. Wow. wow. Yeah, it was it was the strangest thing, and it was a uh, you know I, I just never it was always I, I just love that everyone in the neighborhood had the same thought. Mm -hmm. oh. It's bad for the kid. The kid probably wanted to play with other kids. That's what I'm saying. Oh well, you know what are you gonna do? Yeah. Um, hey, uh, we're rolling along here, and it is almost time for the top five at nine things you're gonna need to get your day off on the right foot. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show, ninety two KQRS. Zip, Tony, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I had some friends come in from like uh, out of town. They were like, you know, let's go to the bar. I said, I lost my ID. It's like, should be fine, right? We're all like 45 or whatever. <laughs> and it's not all right, apparently, at least where I live. Like, I, we, I got denied by two like 25 year old bouncer guys <laughs> to go into a bar. And the, the, the third one we went to, there's another bouncer. I'm like, you guys go in. I'm not leaving this far bar this is stupid we go in, my friends get carded they go in and i i you know can i see your id i said i don't have one 
so I'm just gonna come in and drink. <laughs> Excuse me. It's like you need proper identification in the state of Minnesota in order to drink. <laughs> you don't really, though. You just need to be 45, which I am. So just let me. You, it's true. You don't need an ID, really. Like, what's gonna happen? He's like, how do I know you're 45? I don't know. Maybe the look on my face right now. What do you think? <laughs> Do I sort of, do I have the hope and spark of someone who graduated high school 18 months ago to you or anything, or am I 45, do you think? You think I'm younger than you? Your hat's backwards, dog. Man. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show, and that was Chris Maddock, who is at Laugh Camp tonight, tomorrow, excuse me, and Saturday at 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday night. Chris Maddock will join us here in studio at about 9.25 this morning. I look forward to talking with him. Um, yeah, the, the, the getting ID'd as you age, you know, down south, they, they cart everybody. Yeah. Regardless, uh, I, I enjoy going to a uh, uh, out to eat or drink in Minneapolis, and people just saying, "What do you have?" and that's the end of it. Yeah. Occasionally, you get carded at the door, but for the most part, bartenders don't ask me for an ID. Man, down south, in, in, in you go anywhere, and I'm like, "Are you serious? Look at me." <laughs> look, look look how jaded the look in my eyes is. Right. Like like Maddox just said, what do you think I was just in high school 18 months ago? Get the hell out of here. I remember being in an Atlanta Braves game sitting next to a guy that looked literally like Santa Claus. White hair, white beard, white mustache. <laughs> yeah. And and the beer the guy hawking beers up and down the stairs in the stadium he said, You got an ID? And he goes, No. And he goes, I'm sorry, I can't serve you. Yeah. And I said, This guy's like 70. Sorry, man, them's the rules. Yep. It's Santa. It's Should have sat on his so lap. Ridiculous. I remember being in a bar in Utah where they card everyone that goes in, Santa included, and not having my ID and going, well, come on. They're my kids. We're going in to eat. I'm like, hey, come on, dude. He's like, no, I, I, if I, the cops show up and uh, do a sting on this place and you don't have your ID, we can get busted. I said, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. You get busted if I'm underage. I'm yeah. clearly not underage. Yeah, the cops right. aren't going to go, you do not physically have to have an ID on you. You mm-hmm. just have to be 21 or older. Uh, yeah, but if we can't prove that, I'm like, all right. Oh I, I say I'm not going to win this battle. Never and we mind. Left. And we left. Uh, a little earlier in the show, we were talking about some next door posts, the next door app. Uh, and there was one I read where somebody said, I, I, these people keep farting in my mailbox. On the KQ Talk and text line, two different people said, now nah, they're just using fart spray. Okay. Oh, That's good. Brilliant. But this... But this is the best. This is the best comment uh, from Jake. Anytime you are outside is the time to fart. You have what I call fart blanche. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so simple and so perfect. You can come over to my front yard and fart if you'd like. Man, you know, that as is long as it's outside. Yeah, you're right. Fart blanche. Oh, that's really good. All right, we are at the 9 o'clock hour, so let's take a look at the top five at 9. Here's the things you need to know today. If you are in the state of Wisconsin and you want to go fishing and you want to carry a gun, yeah. you are in luck. <laughs> the law that uh, from 1999 that uh, uh, that says you can't carry a gun while fishing is about to be rescinded. This is nice because I fish with a gun. I mean, that's, I don't even take a rod. No, it's, I'm just blasting it. Get into rid the of water. the middleman. Yeah, exactly. It's bait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's been. It's the gun. By the way, this gun ban has not been enforced since 2011. Yeah. Because that's when Wisconsin legalized the carrying of concealed weapons. But it's still on the books, and now they're just going to take it off the books. You want to go fishing? You want to sit on a boat all day? And you want to drink and drink and drink and drink and drink? And you want to be? Uh, uh, you want to be yeah. heavy while you do it? Go for it. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, you know what? I mean, you're no longer skirting the law. It would only be a matter a of time thing. before my gun ended up at the bottom of whatever lake I was sitting on. Like, yeah. Son of a... Mm. <laughs> uh, number four on the top five at nine. Minnesota Vikings, one day into training camp, have lost another defensive back. Makai Blackman blew his ACL out. Damn it. First day. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Ouch! That yeah, means we will not see him until a year from yeah. this week at next year's camp. They brought As, back Duke Shelley, though, which is cool. He's a beast. Yeah? Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't remember Duke Shelley yeah. here before, huh? 
Well, I mean, yeah, I do what you got to do as a fan. You're disappointed, but then I think about uh, Blackman. I mean, that sucks. It's yeah, tough. Sucks. I mean, third round pick. He was. I mean, played in I think all of their games last year. Started a few of them and was mm-hmm. looking really to uh, further his career. And you're on the sideline, first day of mm-hmm. training camp for the season. He's young. He'll come back. He'll be back next year. He will. But that's a tough one. Uh, that yeah. with, and also, you know, with the loss of Kyrie Jackson, who was killed in a car crash yeah. last month. That's two young defensive backs uh, that, that the Vikings will not be seeing this season um you know i as as anybody out there listening is thinking well steve this is the minnesota vikings i know what you're saying <laughs> it's all right they, they got a, they got a great defensive coordinator the defense is going to be fine yeah let's get the quarterback play in shape and we'll all have a, a, a fun season what do you say number three on the top five at nine uh salt lake city has been designated as your host for the 2034 winter olympic games yeah, you know, I so my thing is I want to go to an Olympics. I don't know why, mm-hmm. maybe just because you know, I was raised like that. I want to check out one Olympics. I've come close a couple of times yep. uh, to, you know, going up to Calgary when Eddie the Eagle when I was a young man, oh, but wow. uh, didn't make it. My, a bunch of my friends went, were on TV. I watched them there in their lawn chairs uh, watching Eddie the Eagle jump and all of that. But, you know, so this one's within striking distance. Salt Lake City, 2034, Winter Games. Mm-hmm. Like uh, you said earlier this morning, let's hope there are still Winter Games, I think. I, I dig them, but I'm a winter enthusiast. I think Minnesota is too. The Olympics for me, uh, winter or summer, it's the exact same experience. Every two years, there's an Olympics, and I don't think about it twice, and then it starts, and then I am just fall right in. It's, it might as well be 76 Innsbruck all over again. I'm like, oh, let me see Dorothy Hamill. She's so cute and gorgeous. And <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I fully, I totally fall in and get caught, aw- caught up. Yeah. I will roll my eyes at all the human interest stories. I'm like, okay, great. The, the curling guy's dad lost a leg on a combine act. And then, right. But by the time the story ends, I have tears in my eyes. And I'm like, I really hope he wins at least the gold. Yeah, we got like a dozen Minnesotans in the Olympics starting here a tomorrow. A lot of Minnesotans. Yeah, a whole bunch of Minnesotans. Oh, and by the way, also, in case you're worrying about the Paris Olympics from uh, that do kick off tomorrow, the opening mm-hmm. ceremonies tomorrow, some events are already underway. Summer Olympics of 2024, about a quarter of a million Condoms are currently in the Olympic <laughs> Village. There's 14,000 athletes. There's 250,000 condoms. You know, that's yeah. you want ratings. You want to get people uh, in, uh, watching the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and put some sex positions in there. Let's get it going. The reverse cowgirl. Whatever. Let's start filming this stuff because they are banging like mad in these Olympic Villages. And why wouldn't they be? Everyone's a god or a goddess in peak condition. They're beautiful. They're young. They have an amazing amount of testosterone and estrogen mm-hmm. just pumping through their veins. Sure. Go for it. Um, I thought you, you lapped me. I thought you were just going to say, let's just set up CCTV cameras in the Olympic Village so we can just see the hall, just the scene in the hallway. I kind of want to see it. Yeah, I mean, you know, you just they're all just walking around showing off their junk. <laughs> hey, I'll see you by the water fountain a little later. <laughs> I've thrown my discus. Now, watch this. Uh, <laughs> let's just stop. It's time to stop. Uh, here's number four on your top five at nine. An Israeli scientist has produced genitals in a lab from cells extracted from mice. That's right. Lab produced gonads. Grow a pair. Now, there is a bit of an issue. Scientists are concerned about the fact that male fertility across the globe is approaching a crisis stage. Guys are just not able to reproduce. The sperm counts are lower across the board uh, yeah. throughout the world, especially in the West. And there is a, a laboratory in Israel, the Sex Determination Laboratory. A woman there has said her goal is not to make men... Uh, redundant. We're not trying to eliminate the need for men. We're just sure trying to help not. the global crisis and male fertility. I don't believe her. What What are you saying? That if women could, uh, if they if they figured out how to reproduce without the need for men, that we would be in trouble? Well, the answer is, yeah, of course. Look at what we've done with everything. Oh, yeah. Listen, we have more than reproduction uh, going for us. Uh, women can't look at a jar of gonads sitting on the shelf and lecture it. Remember something that it oh, did 12 years ago and never sure. forget and let it go, even though the jar of gonads didn't mean to do that, had just a little too much to drink and made a poor decision. And maybe we can 
let it go and move on. Mm-hmm. You don't get that from a jar of gonads. You're saying I'm just a jar of gonads in a, in a human suit. <laughs> exactly. That's, what I am. Wow. That's right. I don't know. I not, what's the matter, hon? You don't look like you're. I was, I was just arguing with my gonad jar this morning. And I'm just, I don't know. It's probably me. I just can't seem to let go of certain things. My penis. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Uh, but anyway, to the Olympic, uh, or excuse me, to the Israeli scientists who are developing, um, uh, you know, uh, an ability to reproduce without the need for us. Honestly, you're taking a lot of pressure off the the men and ultimately. Ultimately, I, I want to say thanks. Yeah. yeah. Of all the things you could produce in a lab, you're coming up with, uh, with uh, you know. Well, let's make them better anyway. genitals. Yeah. I mean, that's, I don't know. Let's uh, get in there and do some uh, bioengineering. Let's make some better kids, I guess. Um, your number one story at nine, Minnesota flying cars. Have fun, guys. The Jetsons Law goes into effect August 1st. Uh, this is a legislation that, have, that defines, quote, roadable aircraft. It's a vehicle that can both fly and drive on public highways. If you've got one, you can legally utilize it as of August 1st. Yeah. Well, thanks for getting out in front of this one legislature. Uh, yeah. Probably decades in front of it. Uh, decades. Good thinking. Why not, uh, I don't know, get some... Uh, Dispensaries going. Remember when we legalized pot by the popular vote? Oh, no, they did that in the legislature in Minnesota. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and actually enact that? Get something on the books here for us. Minnesota is the second state to pass a law regulating flying vehicles. We have joined New Hampshire, apparently. New Hampshire, the other state. New Hampshire, or as I call it, the Mississippi of the North. Right. And you know, (laughs) here's what I love about it. When they do come up with flying cars, this will be the last state. I mean, we're still uh, monkeying around with fireworks. It took um, 150 years to start selling booze on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Uh, In other words, just not too much fun. We're legalizing marijuana, but we're not going to let you buy it for years. Do we honestly think we're going to be ahead of the curve when we start introducing flying cars in Minnesota? No. These Mom flying cars, just in case you're wondering, uh, you will not be able to, like, like, let's say you're on 35, you're heading south, you're close to the Iowa border, and you're yeah. like, you know what, I'm going to fly the rest of the way to Des Moines. No, you can't take off or land on a road. You still have to take off from an airstrip. Yeah. The, the, the fun part is when you land on an airstrip, you can then drive home. <laughs> I guess that's the fun part. I like all these little fender benders we have every morning while we're doing traffic mm-hmm. out there in our expansive metro are now going to be plane crashes. Or it's going to be dev- devastating plane crashes every morning. Well, you know, it's it's great to evolve, I guess, is, <laughs> is what we're trying to say there. Let's keep moving forward. There's your top five at nine. Here's a couple of, uh, of artists you may be having, at the very least, a passing familiarity with. Billy Joel and Sting, a couple of guys who've been very busy the last 40-plus years. They are going to be sharing the stage for one night only this November in Las Vegas. You can score a trip for two. That includes round-trip airfare, a two-night hotel stay, and tickets to the show at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Text the national keyword SINGER. Not like the sewing machine, like the guys singing the songs. Text the word SINGER to 95819 right now to enter for a chance to win. How about that? Chris Maddock is at Laugh Camp tomorrow night and Saturday night at 8 p.m. He is a very funny man from Stillwater, and he is in studio with us in just a few minutes. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Thursday, July 25th. Chris Maddock will be at Laugh Camp tomorrow night and Saturday night. The pride of Stillwater, Minnesota. And he finds himself in the studio with us right now. Chris, good morning, sir. Once again, thank you. Uh, well, you yeah, man, you are more than welcome. Um, <laughs> we're going to be in Stillwater tomorrow night, rocking an 80s cruise. Dude. A little before your time. Yeah. I mean, well, you were around in the 80s, but were you rocking in the 80s? No, I wasn't rocking in the 80s yet. I was uh, I was into whatever my folks were into, Roy Orbison, you know. Uh, well, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah, my parents took me to see him when I was 8, you know. And Was uh, that your first concert? It so in my memory, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, technically pretty yeah, good one. I kind of consider like uh that or the first one I went to by myself mm-hmm. was Lollapalooza 92. <laughs> Okay. Like, yeah. Well, now that's your first concert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. one you go to with your friends. That's that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lost wow. my shoes immediately. You know, <laughs> man, losing the shoes is a strong. I remember it was a 
beautiful day at Harriet Island, and that was and wasn't that the Pearl Jam uh, that Chili was, yes. Peppers we Ministry got, was there? Yeah, we had a two day football practices, and they said we could skip the second one, and it was like heaven. I just ran there. I missed the I, nice. I forget who the first band was, but I missed him anyway. And then yes. Yeah, Pearl Jam. I had no idea that the crowd was just going to surge and yeah. shoes were gone. And <laughs> scared and went home with just mud caked feet. That yeah, that's that was great. a that's a I mean if memory serves, Pearl Jam was like just another band from Seattle and then that tour happened in 92 and then it was like Pearl Jam. Yeah. Like that's when they just that's when it blew up. It was awesome and uh, yeah. uh Ice Cube and uh Jesus and Mary Min- Chain was there. I think they were the first band that I missed. Wow. Yeah. And then yeah. Ministry Yes. Ministry was amazing and uh Red Hot Chili Peppers, who else? Soundgarden. God, yes. what a lineup. Oh, yes. Man, that is that is pretty strong. Yeah. Uh but then but then and so you start with Roy Orbison, then you then you get some Lollapalooza going. Yeah. Everything comes back full circle. You're a big country music fan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have a son named Waylon. That's all I needed to hear. Right, right. It was I, I didn't He's more like a, a Waylon Smithers, you know, like a little more chill. <laughs> but um, but the namesake. I yeah. mean, if, if there's one Waylon. Come it's on, it's just a cool name. It is a cool name. Yeah, uh, and and uh, you know, the, you and of course, you know, you, you got the possibility of a W A I L I N apostrophe spelling. You know, you can do a lot of things with Waylon. Yes, it sounds like he's Waylon exactly. Um, so, uh, but you, your album, Country Music Legend, that yeah. that came out uh, a few years ago, um, is this? Uh, I mean, is there or, uh, do you play country music? Have you ever been a country music musician? I play country music in my room quite a bit. Yeah, actually, it was, uh, yeah, I play, and uh, it, it was kind of so. The way it started was you go out of town, and you'll get some. Uh, you know, it, in the U.S., there's like they have the youngest comedian being the MC, and so they go, "How okay. can I introduce you?" And then you give them all your credits, and they forget everything every right. time. Right. And so I just started saying, "Just say country music legend." <laughs> and they can't. Nice. Even, they don't even usually remember those three words. Of but, course. And so once that once I started doing that, I was like, well, I should probably you know play a song or something. Oh, so that's pretty good. I said a couple songs and whatever, and then uh, th- what kicked it was I was playing. Uh, I had I had like two songs that would work as like a comedy thing, and mm-hmm. I saw f- I have a friend who his wife makes clothes for horse shows, and she saw me playing in shorts, and she was like, "What are you doing?" You look like an idiot. Clothes like, for horse shows. Yeah, like like rodeos and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've, clearly I've never been to one. They must <laughs> yeah, probably get my <laughs> yeah. I can probably get beat up for saying horse shows, but um. So she made me a suit with my name on it. Strong. So now I'm a country music legend. Yeah, you are. Yeah. That's how that happens. <laughs> oh man, if you fit the suit, it's, you're it, halfway home. It's like Yellowstone with the brand. It's like you. It's not, the suit is something you live up to. <laughs> oh, I like it. Yeah, is it? Is it anything like a nudie suit? Is it? Is it? Yes. It's, it's a flamboyant yes, sort of. Yes, yeah. it's a It's suit. an eye catcher. Sequins and got my name on it. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, man. I guess I guess it would have been too much to ask you to put it on this early in the morning. Man, <laughs> I'm just pretty sure most people are sick of that suit by now. But <laughs> I have just worn it out before and with a straight face. Well, I, I it's an interesting choice. You are decked head to toe in Vikings gear. So, you know, it looks like you're ready to go out to camp. So are you growing up in Stillwater? Are you a Vikings fan? Yeah. More in like a mythical sense though. I, you know, I, for your own protection, I don't, I don't have the brain to like, uh, for stats or anything, but, oh, sure, I, knew, but I knew Joey Browner would show up and save me if I ever got in trouble. But, that, <laughs> but you're, but that's who you're cheering for. You, oh you yeah, know, yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair Come enough. On. Who else uh, am I going to cheer for? The Packers? What, go, no, please. We oh only have God. one life to live. That's exactly right. You don't want to, you, you got to keep it on this side of the we, river, brother. We are on a, we're on a rock going around the sun. We don't have time to be Packer fans. Chris Maddock <laughs> is at Laugh Camp tomorrow and Saturday night at 8 p.m. both nights. Uh, camp-bar.net. Just Google Laugh Camp. You'll find it. And you can pick up tickets if you want to go see uh, Chris Maddock. Um, so uh, growing up in Stillwater, okay, you got Roy Orbison's the first concert. Then you saw Lollapalooza. Did you play sports? Was that a part of your life too as a kid? Yeah, I did. And then I, I did like the real stereotypical thing where you uh, experiment with, um, oh, my kid's in the studio. So anyway, uh, quit my senior year mm-hmm. and had to play in a band. boy, And we won the Battle of the Bands. And of course the coach was not impressed with that. I not was, at all. No. No, but we, you know, I was like, I achieved, man. Yeah, hell yeah, you did. What was that, what was that band? What was that vibe? 
we we <laughs> we were uh, this, this is uh, kind of embarrassing. Uh, I didn't realize it at the time. We we covered Tool mm-hmm. and we called ourselves Fuel. Well, hey, yeah, like, sure. It dawned on me in my 20s. I was like, oh, oh. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Whoops. Yeah. yeah. But that anyway, happens. we were winners. But. <laughs> Winning. You won. But we the... tuned down and we sounded awesome. Yeah, right. <laughs> Again, half the battle. Yeah. You know, you tune down and then and then someone's, you know, you, you have to, you can always say, that's what it's supposed to sound like, yeah. whether it is or not. <laughs> Um, yeah, or you know, high, for early days playing music in bands, there's a, just a handful of things. The first one is, of course, just if it's going really poorly, just turn up. Yeah, just just you know. And if you screw up, do it twice. <laughs> I've been doing that one from day one. Yeah, trust yeah. me. It's like you think that Phil was out of time. Wait till I do it again. Yeah. Oh, he meant to do that. Damn straight, meant to do that. Uh, so uh, you're at Laugh Camp. You are a. You've been doing this for a long time. How long? And by the way, and I always mention this because it's always uh, appropriate and it's always applicable, I guess is the word really more. Um, there's such a, a Venn diagram in the brains of uh, funny people and musicians, comedians and musicians. There's a lot of crossover. Yeah. I know a lot of comedians who started on a guitar and I know a lot of musicians who think they're really funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? And so <laughs> I just think there's a there's part of that creative brain. There's a there's a there's a real there's just something about those two realms where there's a lot of crossover. So when you were playing in a high school band, were you already thinking about comedy or were you think were you even thinking about either of those things being something you might do for real one day? No, I never thought about doing comedy, but I I did when I was in bands, I started uh, I didn't realize I was kind of doing bits, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. I would bring up uh, I, I had a flyer for uh um I had a flyer for like a self defense class and okay. then uh, and then I had one for like the other side like for the attacker. I was like, you know, <laughs> you, you, just, you know, if these people are taking self defense, <laughs> that's great. Uh, yeah. you know, I, I'm going to teach you how to, you know, then <laughs> yeah. offense. And uh, I like it. So, so I realized in retrospect that's what I was doing, but yeah. yeah. And then uh what did I um I don't know. The, it, it it's it's just like there's some need for approval or something, but it's also like you don't have to split the money when you're a comic. Man, and yeah. that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The big. I mean, uh, ba- ba- the the simplest way to. Uh, uh, you know, to keep a band together. And this is, this is the, the guys in REM will tell you, and, and you too, for that matter, two bands who from day one said, okay, all money goes four ways. Like no matter what the source of income is, we split it equally. Man. I don't, even if you write the song, we're all going to share it. And they all agreed. And literally those guys are like, that's the only thing you got to do. And then you can go forever. But every other band on the planet, it's like at some point, you know, even like Ringo and George Harrison, billionaires. But at some point they were like, Man, you guys have a lot more money than we do. You know, it just, just, like, just gets a little weird. Crippling egos. Yeah, that's what it is. It can, it can really, you know, it's VH like... A, but it's like a basketball team. It's like, you know, some people are there to rebound, and that's fine as long as the guy shooting all the goal. You know, it's the guy that scores the points. Yeah. You can score all the points, but you have to respect the rebounder. Is it without, always the drummer and the bass player that have that four-way idea? Um, <laughs> no, no, no. You know, it's funny. I wish I'd had know, that idea. I was idea. just thinking. It didn't occur to me because I when I when I when our band got together I was like I don't want to write songs no man I'm I'm still I didn't even know how to play drums yet I was like <laughs> I was faking it trust yeah. me every I was like well if, if I have to bring ideas to for songs then they'll figure out real quick like I can't even drum either like at least I can <laughs> at least I'm good with moving gear while I figure out what I'm doing oh, yeah hustle that yeah. works now it, did, it honestly never occurred to me that we would actually go any I was just trying I was just avoiding college that yeah. was really what it came down to that's what we're all doing avoiding day work that's it and uh yeah but band's more fun definitely uh, you play, know in the like, early days it's it's uh i think it yeah maybe the comic is like the most depressed member of the band and he just is like i'm gonna it, go up here and you guys go ahead and <laughs> go home to your family i'm gonna go it alone i'm yeah. the lone wolf of this outfit i need i need more applause <laughs> um, so how how has uh, how has fatherhood impacted your comedic uh, sensibility, your view of the world in, in a way that comes out on stage? Uh, well, you know, it's I I don't think I could have uh, uh, progressed as a human without a little responsibility. So you know, there's something. Yeah. Um, oh, I hear you. So it's it's like uh, I I think I used to be kind of I used to work blue a little mm-hmm. more. Yeah. And now that sort of just naturally fell away. Right. In in. I don't know. It's, uh, I, I think I still would have been like an 18 year old. 
Um, you know. No, I know very well. Who knows? Maybe not. But. Um, a lot of music, you know, musicians sitting around talking. I've had that conversation with a million times, and I'm sure you have with comics. There's, there's a lot to be said for, um, you know, the joys of, of of life before you have kids. But there's nothing quite like sitting around after you've been a dad for a while, and you're sitting around with a, you know, a colleague, and they don't have kids, and they're telling you how busy they are, yeah. and you're like, <laughs> dude, do you know how much I get done in a day yeah. before you even and wake up and like, yeah. don't tell me you yeah. don't have time yeah. to get things done. I'm the same way. The minute uh, our, our son was born, uh, I was like, oh, wow. I, I, I felt two things. I felt relief that I could drop all the pretense nonsense. I was like, okay, this is actually way more important. Yeah. But then also I, I got incredibly productive. Yeah. Like there's no more wait, no more uh, procrastination involved. No, I can get up in the morning. Now. Yeah. I know you can, but put a know. list together and knock it out. I used to sleep till noon. And then, that you know, the salad days. Yeah, huh? it was, <laughs> yeah. It was about uh, 13 months into fatherhood where you're like, I gotta, I can't do this anymore. Nah. You uh-uh. just have to wake up. You got to get up. You got to get proactive. Yeah. The, the, when, when you start realizing like the key is to wake up way before the baby, then it's, then, then the game's over. Here's what, what you're, a, you're a pro, you're an adult. I don't get excited about the same stuff anymore, but I get really excited when it's bedtime. Uh, like, that's it. I did it. I get to be done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go lay down and and I go to sleep instantly. No, heck yeah. Those are those are. It's it's like it's I used like to a, try to go to sleep. It's like rites of passage. Yeah. You know, when you can just lay down and go, you know, you've done your job. Chris Maddox is at Laugh Camp tomorrow night and Saturday night, 8 p.m. Uh, both nights. Uh, you traveling much these days? You're keeping it regional. What's what's the schedule looking like? Uh, yeah, you know, I was out in Denver, and mm-hmm. uh, that was that place is great. Um, and uh, I'll be in Minneapolis, uh, so that's not traveling. That's not even what you asked. That's living. Well, yeah. no, I'm just thinking like over because well, we had a few years there where nobody went anywhere. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm still building back up from that. Yeah, you know? no, I'm I sure. Got, it's it's like a muscle, and um, I definitely stopped doing it. Mm-hmm. All together, and was just doing stuff at home, podcasting and stuff. Right, and uh, uh, that was like it, it, when I came back to try to do it in like 2021. It was like, oh, this is hard again. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had to go to therapy and ask the guy what I should do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I said, "What do I do?" He's like, "What? What do you?" And I was like, do I like this anymore? He's like, well, mm-hmm. let's figure that out. And it turns out I do. Good. Yeah. Those are good questions to ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you obviously asked him to the right guy. He was apparently fairly helpful with that. Kurt, man. Kurt. Kurt's the man. He right probably on. knows martial arts. He's the I coolest. I bet he does. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to go on the offense with Kurt. You got, no. Kurt, no. Kurt, Kurt, the, the therapist, he, he holds his, you know, the two fingers in front of your mouth like that. You know? Oh yeah. For that, real? That does therapy. that? Yeah. He does that. And he knows all. Yeah, I, got, I lucked out. I I when I start I, probably ten years ago now I started I first time I ever went to therapy and I really enjoyed it and even just calling and booking the first appointment made me feel great. Yeah, you know I was I was like that alone I was like okay I'm gonna actually face some stuff I got I got to work through some things and I remember very clearly fifth or sixth time with this guy and it was it was wonderful but I was I was telling a, a couple things came up and I was given him a, a, a story about something that had happened. And it's a story I'd told many times and yeah. usually for laughs. Yeah. And and his eyes were like almost tearing up and the look on his face was, this is the worst thing I've ever heard. When you tried to tell him a funny story. Yeah, and then I, that's when I recognized like, oh, wait, I... This is this is horrible. Like, oh my God, what, why have I been laughing about this all my life? And that, you know, it was, it was a real. There's a few of those moments along the way when you're like, oh, we're actually gonna go into this now. Crap. I've, I've done. I did the same thing yeah. where I'm like, I'm telling him this funny story, and he's going, hmm. mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. You think that's funny? I think that's because of your relationship with your mother. Uh-huh. Dang it. Yeah, right. And right. I, you know, <laughs> did the same thing, and after a few visits, it comes back to dad, and I'm like. Really? I thought <laughs> yeah. I'd have something unique, you know, or, so, you know, yeah. uncover something, you know, just a, a super, I don't know, odd or original that happened to me, but just yeah. parents, dad, got it. 
Yeah, I I was after one of those sessions. It was funny. I picked up like a ten year old New Yorker magazine, <laughs> and I just and I just turned to an interview with Steve Van Zant from Bruce Springsteen's yeah. band, and he there was this quote, and I just turned right to it, and he says, "Rock and roll music is essentially a bunch of boys screaming, Dad, pay attention to me,' <laughs> and I just shut the magazine. It was like it's yeah. too much for one day. I can't take it. It is, and 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 my parents." loved me yeah that's the thing yeah like, no i i mean I, we that's, can't help it i'm just like gonna go out here right now and say, yeah son i'm gonna let's go screw you up some more let's go let's go yeah. son it's i think this would be a great day for you to watch me get drunk <laughs> <laughs> hey at least you planned it at he's least a, it, it didn't happen by chance he's a teenager he's ready yeah why why not no no need to wait this is what's happening uh chris Maddock, you are at laugh camp tonight i'm sorry not tonight tomorrow night friday and saturday in st paul two shows 8 p.m you are welcome anytime brother thanks for coming in here's a little sports history sort of it was on this day in 1990 that roseanne barr stepped onto a diamond in san diego yes. to butcher the national anthem espn uh had a feature we'll just play you a couple seconds of what that sounded like <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, the gesture and the spit. Make no mistake, the buildup was. That that, she grabbed her crotch and spit and spat. She is tough as nails. St- still one of the all. Like I said earlier, that that went viral before viral. That was oh, everywhere, yeah. man. Can all of imagine? that very appropriate for take me out to the ball game, for sure. example. If she had you know, really tried to mess that up, but yeah, sixty thousand people vi- violently Just booing you, angry, <laughs> live, <laughs> real angry. <laughs> Uh, on this day in 1997, uh, Chris's favorite guy, Brett Favre of the Green Bay Packers, signed a seven-year, $50 million contract, which at the time was an extraordinary amount of money. It's an extraordinary amount of money right now, but not for a top-shelf quarterback. I think Patrick Mahomes makes that every year. Uh, the new standard for the top-shelf quarterbacks is 50 mil. That's it. By a season, yeah. Uh, they did go to the Super Bowl that season. They did not win that game. Never got back. Uh, but, you know, Lambeau Field was uh, literally on fire for years because of Brett Favre, so I'm sure it was worth every penny. Wow. Of course. Yeah. Puts buttons. Puts. Not sure how much he saved since the last time we heard of him. He was involved in a welfare fund scam in Mississippi where he's <laughs> bilking a few million from the state. But, hey, whatever. What a fall. You know, that used to be a lot of money for bilking. That's it <laughs> certainly did. Uh, Bre- Brett's a bilker from way back. He remembers the good old days. I like when he bilked for the Vikings. Uh, boy, he did, didn't he? <laughs> that last ever, that last ever pass. Whew. Get the KQ Morning Show podcast wherever you listen. Ninety-two KQRS.